now, it's your boy PSA Search here with another Sunday show with everyone's favorite chair enthusiast, Adam Prendit. What is up, Sitch? I'm so glad to see you. How you been doing all week? I've been doing good this week. That's okay, right. Cool, Did you guys cool. miss us? Did you guys yes. miss not having us for an entire week? Nobody even noticed, Sitch. We got like two messages. So look. <laughs> It went, uh, people went unaware, but look, we have a great show. Look, we have a couple of guests here. We have mm -hmm. Brianna Wu and we have Dev, short, fat Utaku. So, so what, what's the, what's the plan for today, Sitch? What, why are these people on? So we're going to talk about all the drama relating to Gamergate 2.0. Oh, no. oh my God. It's blood sports, guys. That's what's going to happen. We're oh. going to relitigate the whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. so I thought. Don't I, tease I, me, Dev. I want some blood sports. What so are you I, doing? So I, I kind of like like know like the periphery of the Sweet Baby Ing stuff. Um, but so I thought it'd be interesting to have Dev on and kind of walk us through, you know, how that's connected to the original Gamergate and maybe do some stuff about original Gamergate. And it was actually Dev's idea to bring Bree on so that, mm -hmm. uh, cause you know, give an alternate uh, perspective. Cause obviously, you know, you're on the other side of GG. So that's right. So, I was hanging out in Alaska and then Colonel Campbell uh, brought me in for one last mission. <laughs> it's like, Brianna, you have to go for Gamergate 2. That's right. <laughs> that's right. To infiltrate Outer Heaven, i.e. the Sitch and Adam show. So there that's you go. I'm here today. <laughs> I, so, actually, um, mm -hmm. you, you can you can set up my little animated thing. That's why I put it all together. If you want to put it on the screen. Oh, okay, sure. I'll yeah, see, I, I've, got, I've I got myself an animated avatar just like Bag. Sitch does. There yeah. you go. We yeah, want you can you you cover up my bag. face. Put it right above Brian. Brianna. <laughs> So, well, so I'm, basically, I'm doing a little light graphic design. Why don't you guys get the show started? Well, listen. Okay, I okay, guess okay. the first so here, thing to talk I'll about is that I I'll... heard Bree on Connor show last night say Adam and Stitch, and it was, very, so it was very, oh, very triggering. So sorry. I wrote, oh, I wrote no. okay, if you can see my screen right now, it says Stitch and Adam. I Do can't not believe mess it. Up again. No. I so can't sorry. believe it. I'm a bad, no. bad, I'm a bad person. I'm so yes, sorry. This is what I will do. You name a charity, and if I F <laughs> it up, I will donate hundred dollars for that charity what okay. is sargon's the ch charity the charity is sargon's charity the charity is the sitch and adam show <laughs> okay oh that's a good All idea yeah exactly that's fair that's fair i mean okay. here's the thing I, I i still call call this the adam and stitch show yes because you're a terrible person <laughs> yes, it's so yeah. hard it just it's it's broken in my brain. I, 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 I'm bad. This is how so we sorry. get people yes. to to gain free will. We have to break yes. them from the the mold. <laughs> listen, listen. It's because it's because of the way that it's laid out linguistically, right? Like Adam is a hard name and Sitch is a soft name, so that's how it flows. Hard than soft. That's why you have yeah. like Abin preach, right? It's the same kind of thing. Oh, that, there you that, go. That, that that that's that's why everyone says Adam and Sitch. Even the name of the show is Sitch and Adam because that's Sitch just how a, English works. Sitch is a soft hands name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> let's get let's get into this so what are we gonna watch the clip first that's going viral everyone's talking about get, oh get brianna's reaction we, 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 we can if you want that's it's yeah no let's watch jump it in, jump in the middle of the story though but yeah well look what's the backstory on this clip dove okay here if you want the entire backstory no let's okay. give us the cliff notes the entire backstory we have to go back to 1848 <laughs> no Marx. no no feudalism okay. <laughs> Back when Karl Marx was attacking the Gamer Gators, okay, in Germany. <laughs> okay, okay, so here, do, do you want the TLDR of just the Sweet Baby stuff? Yes. Is that, is that what you're looking for? Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Something like three months ago, some people, some sleuths on the internet noticed that a whole bunch of, let's say, uh, high profile flops had contracted a company known as Sweet Baby Inc. to do some writing work for them. Okay. And nobody knew how much work they had done or what kind of work they had done, but that was the name that kept popping up in the credits, right? So they were involved with uh, Spider Man 2. They were involved with, I think, the Saints Row reboot and um, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And there's a few, there's a few indie games in there as well. But people's like, are, are these Weren't people they involved the reason... with the Suicide Squad game? Isn't that kind of what sparks? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, everyone doing digging. Right. Yep. And so they, they discovered, so they, they start looking to the sweet baby ink company. It's a company based in Montreal. It's a writing consultant company, um, has an interesting person there you for Canadians, me. Canadians, you keep bringing this horrible yeah, we, stuff to us. Can you, you fuck stop it all up, dude? 
you fuck it all up. But um, no, there's there's a person I know in there named Felix Kramer, mm-hmm. uh, who was part of Gamergate way back in the day. But also there's someone that I I had a you know a a two ships crossing in the night kind of experience with at a convention back in like 2009. You had um, sex with her? No, not that kind of no. Well, what the heck? What are you talking about? Uh, it is generally I, what that means, Dev. When you say, <laughs> "Is it? Wait, is that what that means? Isn't it? Yes, no, of I, course. No, I, I thought I thought two ships crossing in the night just means that you just bump into someone and have like one conversation, then never see them again. Um, <laughs> I was, okay, Dev. I didn't know okay, it was sexual. Sure. I didn't know it was sexual. Okay, right. I didn't. I did not have sex with anyone. All right, okay. ever in my entire <laughs> life. I'm an incel. <laughs> okay, so but so, so basically, um, I, I I attended one of her panels like in the late, like 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. Right. And so I already had this kind of idea of what this person was like. And then she was a part of Gamergate. At some point, Maya became Felix because they transitioned and now they're working for um, Sweet Baby Inc. But that, that's my personal connection to the story. But basically this company has been working on, um, has been working on the, these games. And at some point, um, a few weeks back now, there's a guy, is an, how do you pronounce his name? Is it Cabrus or something? Uh, yeah, Cabrutus Rambo. All right, he's a mm-hmm. guy from Brazil, just like a random, a random dude. I've spoken to him a couple times. He's just like a normie. Right? He doesn't fucking know anything about Gamergate or any sort of internet drama. He's just a normal guy. He made um a Steam curation page called the Sweet Baby Ink Detector. All right, a Steam curation page is basically a user can make a public page with a list of games. They can put whatever games they want in the list for whatever. So like you can be, be like, these are my favorite games by Sitch, and you have like a list of games that mm-hmm. you want your fans to play, something like right. that, right? All the so, dating games, yes. All the dating, all the dating sims. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he he was inspired by the Denuvo list. So people who didn't want to uh, buy games that used Denuvo, the the anti piracy software that's actually really bad for your computer. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a list like that. So some fan made, made a list like that. So he's like, I'm going to do this for Sweet Baby. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to go to Sweet Baby's website, take all the games that, that, that they've worked on and make a Steam list. Um, and this Steam list goes viral. And that's where the whole shit show starts, right? Because now you have, let's say, progressives who are trying to cancel it. They're mass reporting it. You had people from Sweet Baby, the company, like tweeting about it and say, shut this guy down. Fuck this guy. You had, um, you know, Kotaku has written an article about it at this point. A few other of, of, of uh, a few other outlets have written articles about the it. The articles kind of... attacking the. Why list? do they want to shut yes. the list down? What's yeah. the big deal about the list? Um, well, it's the list is specifically a list of games that Sweet Baby Inc. has. Yeah, I got on. that part. But why? Yeah. Why do they want to shut <laughs> well, this guy down for? copy pasting something off of their website <laughs> somewhere else it seems it's, ridiculous well th- the fact that it's gone viral and now it has like a quarter of a million followers or something why did it go viral weeks, though why did what what's why they, are well, people what is the story because, here well because people don't like sweet baby ink because they think that th- these are the people that are injecting woke nonsense into AAA games there you're burying the lead dev get to <laughs> it these are a bunch of woke sjw's I'm, they're calling them out for corruption I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be sensationalistic. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Okay. So that's, we what, want the sensationalism. This is a what t- are you talking about? <laughs> this is a TLDR. What are you talking okay. about? Dev is like, okay. But, okay, well, let me tell you my backstory. I had man, sex no. with this girl at a conference Just one the, time. I did not. Don't you dare make that the narrative. I swear to fucking God. Anyway, anyway, basically fans are mad. They think that sweet baby ink is injecting woke nonsense into modern video games. There's probably some truth there. So they may, so this list goes viral of all the games that they've worked on. It turns into a big fucking shit show. And you have people attacking them. You have people trying to cancel them. You have fans like saying messaging steam. Don't, don't take the list down. This is great. And like, you know, battle lines are very clearly being drawn the same people from game. So so people like the list later, people like the list because they want to boycott those games. That's what's going on. Okay. And the the people who like sweet baby, want the list to come down, even though it's already on their website because they don't want the games to be boycotted. They like this stuff being injected in the games. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so is, look, look, let's just, just let Dev, let's just let Dev respond and yeah. then I'll let you go, Brianna. I just have a clarifying yeah. question. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just, I have like one sentence left before I'm done. Basically, I, I think it's because it was made by someone who doesn't like Sweet Baby and it, mm-hmm. and the people who follow it don't like Sweet Baby. Like if this was a list of like Sweet Baby games and it was made by a person who likes the company and right, all the followers, fine. people who like the company, it would be left alone. Right. Okay. It's the fact that this is a list denigrating their work is why I think it's gone viral. Okay. Go well, ahead, Brianna. I mean, if you are in the video game industry, criticism is what you sign up for. So that that seems really odd to me. 
Um, I guess this is what I, I don't understand. Dev, you know, just so the audience knows, we're friends. Like, I'm asking us in good faith. Sure. The part of it, oh, I'm about to Let's stab you in the back. <laughs> no, no, no. This is nothing like we're that. We're friends, but Dev, like you're obviously you an all right racist. This is the part of it. I know y'all want us to fight, but this is a genuine <laughs> question. So if I, like, one of the games on this list is Alan Wake 2, which is a very, very, very long game. Um, what I genuinely don't understand is like there's this blanket claim that it's um, woke, right? That they're making the games woke. But I look at some of the games on the list that I've actually played and it's really genuinely hard for me to think of any point of that, that I, you know, like that Call of Duty moment for Call of Duty Cold War, where it's like, are you male, female, or non-binary? And I'm like, I don't think we were talking about this in the 80s, right? Like, I could understand someone finding that to be a little pandering, but I can't think about anything like that from Alan Wake 2. So how do they attribute this quality of wokeness that they perceive? How did they directly attribute that to Sweet Baby? That's the part of it I don't understand. Okay, so one, I think it's the people who are working at Sweet Baby, mm -hmm. because now that all the digs have happened into those people, we know sure. their, their, their Twitters are online and their history, and they, they seem to be very far left, very progressive people. Sure. So that it seems to be the case that it's at least partially the people who are working for them. Um, I can't speak to Alan Wake specifically because I haven't played Alan Wake 2 yet myself. Oh, it's um, good. I mean, I liked Alan Wake 1. No, no one else that I know liked it, but I liked it. Really? I think, I think it's I'm, just, I'm just a fan of... Um, of David Lynch, right? But um, I think when it comes to Alan Wake 2, it's because they're doing the thing where you have Alan Wake, the headline character, and then half the time you play as a black woman. Right? Sure. Now, now, that in and of itself isn't bad, but we've seen so many examples of that in the past, say, five years, where it's just been a shit show. The, the one that comes off the top of my head right now is um, is the Obi-Wan show. Right. Where half right. the show was about Reva and it was a terrible fucking show. So I think what's happening is even if Alan Wake 2 is a good game, I don't know, I haven't played it. People are, are like are, are seeing a pattern here where it's like old property with old beloved characters, but we're going to make you play as someone else that you don't care about for half the game. And people, I think, are just getting tired of that. Mm -hmm. I, I I could so look. I think most of us have played Alan Wake. I mean, I thought those parts really worked, especially because the gameplay was so different between those two characters and was such a core part of how that story was told. Let's flip it the other way around. Of all the games on the list that Sweet Baby worked on, what is the best example that you have of like pandering SJW? Uh, bad, you know, males are bad, all those kind of stereotypes. What's the best dirt that you've got uh, going in the other direction? So, um, one of them, I can give you two right off the top of my head. Sure. W one of them is the Saints Row game. That was just a fucking okay. dumpster fire. Yeah, the, yeah. All, like, the, the, not only not only was the game's quality bad, just in terms of how it played. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, you watched the interview I did with, with, with the developer, right? I did. One of the developers. Really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he was outlining like certain things were happening at the studio and and certain things that that you know they, they took certain things out of the game because of the BLM riots in 2020, uh, the, the, like the, the shoehorning in of like cringy millennial humor about student loans and shit. Like that's that that game I think is it's pretty obvious. The other one that I can think of is. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And it's because when Assassin's Creed Valhalla was marketed, they were trying to sell the main character of Valhalla as being the same as like a, a European refugee migrant situation where it's like Ooh. you have these Vikings who are coming to, to the UK back during the, the Viking days to try and start a new life. And they're being resisted. It's like, they're fucking Vikings. They're here to like rape and plunder. That's what Vikings did. All right. So it, it's this recasting of, what we what we know Vikings were in this very refugee positive light in in the game that's it's very strange. So I will one hundred percent grant you Saints Row. I I myself I I've beaten Saints Row three probably five or six times. I love that game so much. I even like Saints Row four. Um, <laughs> I've gotten through about an hour of Saints Row the the reboot before I had to sit it down. How how do you know though? Because these games are so large in scope, and they have like internal writing teams. How do you attribute those aspects directly to Sweet Baby? That's that's the part of this that I don't understand. I don't. Okay. Yeah, that, that's why. Even though I've talked a lot about this topic, you you won't find me saying that. Some sure. people have. 
Other sure. people have that I've seen, and they, they say it pretty constantly, but I haven't said that yet. Okay. Well, no one and, knows, and, and, right? Because they just consulted on games. We don't know. We no one would be able to determine what exact part of the they game. They said they rewrote parts of it. Like she said sure. that in mm-hmm. her interview. Right. So, but I'm saying they yeah. wouldn't know. We. I mean, I don't believe anyone have the information to know like what exact parts and what games that they contributed to specifically. Yeah. So it. I mean, if it is the case that it happened the way that it happened with um, Saints Row, when I talked to that developer, he basically said that. It wasn't like management in these companies. They were all, you know, hyper woke and they were all very far left. They just wanted to make money. They were just very, very out of touch. And so someone recommended to them that, hey, being woke is in right now. How about you hire this consulting company and they'll help punch up your script? And the management was like, will that make us money? Will that make us money? And they're like, yeah, of course it will. So that's what happened. And that, that if if what happened with saints row is happening everywhere, which it might be, that probably seems like what's going on here. It's not like, it's not like management is ideologically motivated towards progressivism or something. It's it's much more likely that they want money, they're out of touch, and they've basically been bamboozled. Though, you know, if you go on their Wikipedia page, it's funny, they, they show like the list of games they worked on, and then they say what their role was. And some of them, you know, they say writing, script writing, full development characters. So maybe I could give a little bit a greater sense, but some of them, their role was sensitivity reading. <laughs> Which I believe, because I was when I, I listened to the a woman who was a co-founder of Sweet Baby Inc., that's where they like read over your script and they basically try to say like, well, we think that this thing will like trigger people or is, you know, not woke enough. That was my understanding of what a sensitivity reading was. Yeah. So, so what I understand of it is basically like, let's say that you're writing a game and you're writing a black character for your game and right. you have no one who's black on staff. You're going to go hire a company like this to get like a black perspective and be like, hey, is this how a black person would react in this situation? Which is kind of racist. But I mean, <laughs> if you're, if you, because like, I mean, black people aren't somehow black people from only people, react right? one way in every situation. So <laughs> yeah. obviously. Right, right. But also like if you're, if there, if there actually is something about racism in the story, you might want to get that perspective. Like that, that's fair enough. Right. But mm-hmm. it, that's how they pitch it. But it does seem like it's probably going farther than that. Can we get so, like little seal microaggression free is on each package? <laughs> so let me give an example. Do y'all remember the uh, the Bethesda game that came out? I think it was like uh, eight years ago. What was it? Pillars of Eternity. And they had a trans character in there. And you're just like talking as trans NPC and they just start blurting out how they're trans, right? And it's just completely pandering and stupid and bad. And everybody thought so. Trans Twitter thought so. Uh, you know, like uh, more right-wing Twitter thought so. Mm -hmm. It was just poorly done. I I think, and I'm not trying to like belittle the concerns here because I think they're fair if, you know, like Cassandra was really that bad, genuinely. Um, But like, I'm not like philosophically, I, I can't object to bringing in people to say, this is how this person might speak here, or this feels authentic. I mean, you know, the the video game industry, I know for a fact, contracts military people all the time to get those details right. I know they contract people uh, for major racing franchises that are actual racers, right, uh, to get that right. Or, you know, games like, uh, you know, the, the Underground series to kind of get that more urban feeling. It, it seems to me, if you're trying to write certain characters, it, it, it can be done well or it can be done badly. I think both of us would agree, but I don't like automatically object to bringing in someone to like give it a pass, right? Or or do y'all disagree? No, I don't disagree. It, it, it is one of those things where it's, it's probably a useful tool in an appropriate situation. It just seems yeah. like it's being used excessively inappropriately and has been for a while. Sure. So... Uh, so those want me to bring up, and I was going to bring up. You left out a very important part of the story, Dev. How dare you? When you what did I leave out? It. So my this is my understanding was that the the way that all the sweet baby ink stuff kind of exploded in the first place was entire and part of why people were calling it Gamergate 2.0 was that it was a Streisand effect. That essentially the person made this list where they were saying like, oh, these are the sweet baby games, you know, don't buy them, and then someone who worked at Sweet Baby Inc like called like a lot of attention to it on Twitter and said like, Hey, we should get this, you know, list taken down and we should get the person who made this list. We should get their steam account like canceled essentially. And that is like the fact that they brought all that like negative attention to the list is what got everyone talking about in the first place. 
Like no one would have um, noticed this otherwise, probably. So there, like, if you if you hung out in, let's say, like, you know, uh, the, the the nerd erotic side of the internet, there's mm -hmm. definitely been people making videos about sweet sweet baby ink for like three months now. This is not a new topic to those people, but yeah, the reason that it it showed up among you know your average Twitter user is because a person employed with them named Chris Kindred started a thread trying to basically a, a call to action saying, let's destroy this guy. Let's take his list down. Also, let's get a seam account banned. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and well, that's what makes cancel the culture. Here, can I, I wonder if I can find it for you. G give me, give me 30 seconds. I'll find it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just want to say on record, I disavow that. I think if you're a video game uh, producer, uh, you know, criticism of your work is completely legitimate. And, you know, it's not like we have not, uh, you know, on the left have not, uh, you know, said things like, oh, this person has said this problematic thing, J.K. Rowling with uh, Harry Potter. It's not like we didn't say, like, you know, uh, she said some problematic things. I think you should know about this before buying this game. I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So um, I don't know. I think that it frankly strikes me as unprofessional if that's true. Brianna, mm -hmm. is it fair to call you red pilled now? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Do I come off as red pilled? No. A little bit. I mean, I see your Twitter and like you're basically going after all these far left activists. I'm really and stuff. pissed I, off I at the far left. I'm really yeah. angry at them. Look, yeah. Well, I mean, how far do you, how far can you go before people start? I, I'm sure people on the left are calling you red pilled. They can call you a Nazi. Say. Yeah, I can call you <laughs> a Nazi today. <laughs> you know, well, here's the thing. Say, okay. Yeah, go they're, ahead. they're calling you a Nazi for the same reason that they called me a Nazi in 2014. Right. Because I have the same criticisms. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not against normal like Democrat positions, but I don't like the far left at all. I think they're probably one of the worst things to ever happen to our fucking civilization is the far left. Deb, they are out today. They just finally opened a Holocaust museum in Amsterdam. Oh and you've got a bunch no. of these nut jobs are out there standing on cars and screaming. It's like, can you just can you just show like the littlest bit of adult judgment here? Just just this much it's insane and no i i don't support that um i think it's really i don't think it's helpful for anything but that doesn't uh, so, make me not a leftist you know or at least not progressive well leftist so mean, usually means communist and i don't well, think I'm not like a you're a capitalist no. yeah exactly yeah so. yeah, yeah. I'm, a, left, I'm a democrat left -winger. that wants universal health care i mean dev right. i think you want universal health care if i'm correct well, i've already got it but it's well, going it's yeah, going kind of bad I, in canada but i've already got it sure <laughs> So, so Sitch, I sent you in the in the Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. Are we gonna Are we gonna watch the clip that we were gonna do the? Hold intro? on, hold on. Let's do it. We can. We, we, we should We should look at these two two screencasts before we watch the clip because the. Clip's I sent you up, a but... Doctor Diller sent me the screenshot that you're looking for, Dev. But like, is one screenshot, okay. and I send it to. Okay, Adam, yeah. If you bring so, it. Okay, it's, it's the same it thing. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I'll bring um, them up. So, okay. So, but yeah, so obviously no one here supports, like if someone wants to start a campaign and they want to say, hey, I don't think you should buy, you know, games that are associated with this company because I believe this company has political leanings that I disagree with. I mean, you know, as you said, uh, Bray, that's kind of, you know, that's what the left has been doing for a very long time now. It seems like, you know, with the JK Rowling and everything stuff. So it should be totally fine for someone who's more right leaning or centrist leaning to do this activity. Yeah. And this person that works at the company tries to get them banned. This draws a lot of negative attention. The story blows up, kind of goes a little bit more mainstream. And now, interestingly, we do see, as you were talking about, Dev, there are Kotaku and other gaming journalist outlets that seem to be defending Sweet Baby Inc., which is weird, right? Like, no one, like this, it, it definitely seems to be that this is really another culture war issue that, like, because Sweet Baby Inc. is perceived as being left wing by their own words, that's why the video game journalist outlets are defending them. Like they wouldn't be defending, you know, they were not defending uh, J.K. Rowling. Well, it's also because they're they're friends with these people, right? Right, right. It, they, I mean, it's. It, I literally said it's the same people, right? So, like Nathan Grayson was a core part of the original Gamergate. He's come out and talked about this, and he's published an article. All right. It's the, it's the same fucking people. It's the same people as 10 years ago. They've stuck around for 10 years doing all this shit. So like, it's it, this it also it it feels like Gamergate too because mm -hmm. the energy in the community is the same as it was 10 years ago. Right. You know, everyone's digging up information. Everyone's looking to people's pasts. Everyone's got connections, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, on, on the on the 
people on the side of the conversation where people are actually interested in the the issue and not simply just there to troll or shit post um it feels the same it feels the same right. as it did 10 years ago well so here's the tweet this is from chris kindred it says the steam creator harassment group sweet baby ink detected is led by this person and they give the person's twitter handle Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported, even with the discriminatory language filed off. The group itself still fails the code of conduct. So I guess they're assuming that the person is a bigot or something, even though I, there wasn't any bigotory language in the Steam group. And it says, anyway, report the fuck out of this group. And then under that says, and report the creator since he loves his account so much. So they're saying, like, look Ooh. how much time and games he has on Steam. Try to get him banned from Steam. Right. So. Yeah. <sighs> Not good. Not good. Yeah, and then this person, this person got. It, it, well, the, the thing is, is progressives just they just aren't as as institutionally powerful as they were ten years ago. Yeah. So this guy got like completely fucking destroyed on the internet. Like, <laughs> the, the same usual suspects are kind of coming to help out, but like this this is not. If if, if this really was GamerGate two, it is not going well for the anti the anti GamerGate crowd this time because no. people have have had ten years to be angry about this shit, and they have way less people on their side this time around. Well, and also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this uh, Chris person who I guess just likes to step on the rake again and again, uh, I believe they got temporarily banned from Twitter for this because it was accused of, you know, trying to do a pile on or something. And when they came back to Twitter, one of their first posts was about, you know, if you guys don't know this recently, Akira Toriyama, the legend who is the creator of Dragon Ball Z and other things, uh, died very recently and kind of unexpectedly. And as soon as this person came back on Twitter, they basically tweeted an insult towards Akira Toriyama saying that uh, Toriyama gave us the best and worst black characters in anime in the same series. It took range to do that. So Woo. yeah, kind of a master I, of very bad takes. Yeah. I wouldn't say that right now. <laughs> right. So I've yeah, never so. been a big fan of his woman characters, so I wouldn't say that like right after he died. <laughs> right after his woman died. <laughs> so there you go. So yeah, there's there's this this person, and then also the the thread from Felix Kramer was was the second part of why this went viral because mm -hmm. they also hopped on board and they have a full GamerGate history that I did like I did a, an expose on this person ten years ago, right? And the shit they were getting up to then, and it's the same shit as they're doing now. Is, so and, and is Felix Kramer associated with Sweet Baby, or they like what was yep. their? They work for okay. Sweet Baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and, no and, one's really. Yeah, okay. So so here I, I will actually tell the art for you, okay? Since we don't want to re rehash ten year old drama constantly, I've already done it like twice this past week. Um, um, Felix Kramer ten years ago was Maya Kramer, was one mm -hmm. of the people who had sex with Zoe Quinn behind Aaron's back, worked for an, Is this another alleged consultant or company. confirmed. Uh, confirmed by Aaron, but it was just his word. Okay. Um, she worked for another consulting company just like this called um, Silver String Media, but they only work on indie games. So same job, just smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um, and she did consulting for Zoe. She did consulting for all the articles reporting about Zoe during Gamergate. And also the games that she, that, that she uh, worked on through Silver String Media were winning awards at the Indie Game Fest while she was having sex with the person at the head of the Indie Game Fest. And that was... That was a big deal during Gamergate. That was that was one hmm. of the videos that I published. Interesting. I, I I lay it all out in the video, but that's the TLDR for because it's, right. it's ten year old drama. Like it's like whatever you know. But sure, still. sure. So I guess so. Do you have a take on any of this, Bree? Like the sweet baby stuff, or even the older stuff that Dev is talking about? Well, look, I <laughs> it's really hard because I don't want to um, drive more harassment towards. Felix, but I would say I'm not surprised he is um, in the middle of the same kind of scandal. I, I think that's what I would say. <laughs> what does that mean? I, I, you know some tea? It sounds like you know some... some... I, I can I, be less professional if you want. Sure. Please, please go ahead, Dove. You do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the one time that I crossed paths with this person, they were very very cliquey. It was very yeah. much like a in indie game development is our scene and you're not in it, you know. And if you weren't, mm. if you didn't have the right friends, they would just look right down their nose at you. Yeah, and that's the experience I had with them when I met them the one time. Mm -hmm. So let let's jump back a little bit to what you were talking about, Dev, uh, about progressives having uh, less political power today. 
Because I, I do think on the internet, I mean, yeah. uh, well, I think overall, I think overall, I think you can look at, uh, you know, what's happening after October 7th, even in the real world, you know, with actual Congress people. I think there are some people, they're progressive in Congress that are going to lose their elections by lo- large margins this time around. So, um, but I would say, you know, how can, give me just a minute to say this right. There is, it is true that if you want to work at IGN or Polygon or one of the major game studios, statistically, you have less of a chance of making it into a paid position doing that than making the NFL draft, right? There are just very few positions to to do this. There are a lot of people that want to do it. And as a result of that, it is a very clicky, insulated group of people. And I think what you described with with Felix and your experience with him, that is certainly a trend I've seen with a lot of indie game developers. And I think one of the things that has happened is I look around at some of the people I knew 10 years ago, and it, it's really surprising to me how, how little growth they've had, right? Or Or their their ability to like see things at like a deeper level and comment on it publicly. I think a lot of what um, some of the people they're upset about right now are talking about, I think there's a kernel of truth in it because I do think at a certain level, Games Press does have contempt for the gaming audience. And I think at a certain level, um, the indie game people can be um, extremely cliquish and hostile to people. So I think that's what some people are responding to. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, should we watch this clip? Yeah, let's Is watch it. it. Sure. That, was a, so, that was the TLDR, the 45 minute well, TLDR. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the context of this clip. Okay. So no, this is from... please stop. Let's just watch <laughs> Don't worry, the it'll clip. Be fine. It's from GDC 2019. This is the co-founder of Sweet Baby Inc. Okay. Yes. This is like a, a little clip from a talk they gave that went viral. Okay. Yeah. So, ready to go? Have it on? Yeah. Do you, are Let's you ready? Do it. Okay. I'm looking. And if you have a team lead, put that request to them very, very early. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, Put this stuff up to your higher-ups, and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Because they have to consider, like, I, I say that all out as a joke, but it's actually very, very true because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them with um, both ethically and financially. You can say this is important. And it's also a valid discussion to have because if you're working with a very thin narrative budget and you work in AAA, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised or dismayed by the amount of money that marketing can give you. That's where we go there, yeah. Right. So what she basically what she's saying is that, you know, she's saying if you work at a game company and they don't want to give you money to hire someone like Sweet Baby Inc. to sort of look over your stuff to make sure it's not offensive or make sure it has the correct, you know, woke politics injected into it or whatever you want to call it, you know, to kind of, you know, make this sort of thread about how, you know, I don't know, the game's not going to do well, people are going to be mad or, or whatever it is. So a lot of people very much did not like that she was saying this, which I understand. Yeah. So so the clipped version that went viral on Twitter just sounded like she was threatening. She's like, listen, you should go if you're if you're someone who's progressive working in a big studio, go and threaten your company if they won't hire us. And that's how right. the clip version sounded. And to be honest, the the the, the, the full version sounds a little bit better, but not much, to be honest, Sure. because sure. it still kind of sounds like she's saying, hey, there's going to be a viral shit show r- surrounding your game if you don't get the progressive conversation correct. So you should hire us and go tell people at, at the company that they should put some money towards us. And it seems very self-serving because look at her company, right? Mm hmm. Of course. It, it is. This is so this is the best good faith argument I can give the other side, though. 
because, you know, I've listened, I did watch the whole two hour video you did with Sidewinders, right? And I'm not saying you did this with some of the side, side scrollers. Side Sidewinders side was that side yes, side, Sidewinders was that one controller made by Logitech back in the uh, 2000s. Apologies. Yes. <laughs> uh, think about missile technology. Um, no, um, but, you know, there was very much an undercurrent of they just don't respect us enough as gamers. They hate us. They have contempt for us. You know, th there's very much that undercurrent. And if they don't respect us, you know, we are going to let them know about that. I, I guess I don't understand why her saying that, um, you know, gamers could watch this, they feel that their identity is not respected, and they could have some aggressive feedback that could hurt your game. I don't understand how that's any different than what they were saying with side scrollers, which is, you know, if you don't respect us, we're going to make your lives hell. Like, it, it just seems like two competing groups of different visions well, trying to advocate for what they want. I'm not sure anyone on side scrollers said that. They just said, we're not going to buy your games, right? Right. Right. Like, like, I don't think anyone on side scrollers, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for Craig when I'm, I'm, I'm going to say he's not pro harassing people or anything like that. Oh, gosh. No, no. I'm not saying pro harassment. I'm saying, don't you think there's a contingent out there that wants uh, that wants a certain kind of representation the other way, like from the conservative camp, right? And they're going to get upset if they don't get it. So to so, me, it just seems like different groups here advocating. I, I think I, I think I can represent this in memes, right? Sure. Because you know, 15 years ago, the meme that you saw posted on 4chan's V board all the time was that every game had a white male protagonist with a shaved head. Right? right. And now every game has a black woman with like half of her head shaved. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and that's the and that's the meme. And... One, two, <laughs> yeah, there's so many okay, of them. Right? Yeah. And so, I mean, very clearly there's space in the in the gaming industry for both of these things. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, so I, I brought up two examples. I think I think it was actually on side scrollers. Uh, one of them was the tabletop game Thirsty Sword Lesbians. The other one was the TV show High Guardian Spice. Both of these were awful and they were very progressive, just very bad products. And they're very clearly pushing a progressive mes message. But because they didn't come in and take over a different property, they simply made their own. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, like, like there, there were like nerd erotic types who made fun of them. It's like, well, whatever. But most people just left them alone, right? I think the issue is that it's not just that they're making progressive stuff with representation. It's that they're coming into pre-established properties that people already love and already have this connection to and that they've grown up with and then they feel very strongly about. And they're saying, by the way, we're changing all of it now. Now it's about this character you don't like and you don't care about. And we're also right. going to put politics in it. And now you have to watch it and be a fan of it like you were the fan of the old stuff or else you're a bigot. It's, mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening, really. If, if progressives just made all their own shit and just marketed to their own crowd, I think it would be fine. Well, yeah. I think that's like a big part of it, Dev. And I think there's another big part of it, which is like, yeah, you can look at it like there's two different interest groups. There's two different groups of people that are, they want what they want. They have different ideas about how something should look. But the question is, what is it like? What is their idea of what things should look like? And the problem is, like from the like the the leftist perspective or the sweet baby perspective, the woke perspective, whatever word we want to use to define describe this, it's not just like even replacing a character uh, with someone who's a woman or someone who's a minority or something. It's also it seems like either for some reason that they have to inject politics that's also related to that, or they just really suck at writing. So it all seems to be kind of tied together. Because when you have sort of a, quote, race swap, like I even did a whole video about this, which was Into the Spider-Verse was basically universally loved by everyone, even a lot of people that'd be considered anti-woke. And there wasn't, there was some, but there wasn't really a lot of complaints about people going, oh, Into the Spider-Verse, they replaced Peter Parker with like a black, you know, kid. Oh my God, how could they do this? Everyone liked it because it was just very well written and it wasn't, it didn't feel political and it felt kind of more in line with, you know, classic 90s liberalism. Like the fact that Miles was black didn't really have much to do. You know, there's only a subtle scene that has really anything to do with that. It doesn't really have anything to do with the story. There wasn't really like woke leftist politics injected into, into the Spider-Verse whatsoever. You know, so it seems to me like that's like another big part of all this is the well, injection of the leftist politics into stuff. What's really interesting is you can now compare that um, to Spider-Man 2. 
because it's yeah. it still has it still has a black Spider Man. You have Miles Morales, and it's right. it's been received the complete other way because that game took um took a lot of effort just come out and say no 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 this is the Spider Man now. Peter Parker is no longer Spider Man. It's Miles Morales. He's the main character. He's the guy. And it's like people are like, what the fuck? Like this is what, what, what we signed up for. Like we want to see Peter Parker. You know what I mean? It, it's right. the fact that it, it's it's like it's a form of of narrative replacism almost, where they're not yeah. simply just coexisting with other with other characters. They're replacing the character that you actually like. Sure. Right. And I think it's another. Know, oh, yeah. So well, you you go, Bree. No, I was just going to say, I really think that's true. You know, this is, and just stay with me on this metaphor here, but there, there's a quality of the left that, um, for me as a political professional, I've run into a lot, where the left enjoys making the most extreme thing possible, the most extreme statement possible, and daring you to disagree with it, even when it's um, poorly framed. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, uh, defund the police is a really good example of it. It tests extremely poorly. It's an election losing machine. And, you know, if you're saying this on Twitter, there's a certain aspect to the left that's just like daring you to, to, to disagree. Or even today where they're showing up the, the free Palestine people and protesting at a Holocaust museum. There's an aspect of that that's like, how dare you even bring us up because what we're doing is so noble, you know, how don't you dare like call us on that. What, what I'm seeing creatively sometimes behind the scenes and, and I, to be clear, I'm, I used to be guilty of this before, you know, I have more experience to kind of give me a wider perspective is it's like the first things you're trying to make a political point. The story itself is the politics. And I've come to the conclusion that that, very rarely actually makes good entertainment, which is why I think progressive narratives and games did not succeed in the marketplace, ultimately. So, um, you know, there was a, when Bob Iker came back to Disney a few, uh, a few months ago, you know, he got asked about some of the um, overt politics that Disney movies had been putting into, um, you know, the recent films. And he was like, he gave a really reasonable answer. He's like, look, everybody's got to come see our movies. I want everyone to feel comfortable, right? And that's going to mean, that's going to mean we're not going to shy away from some messages, but we've got to do it in a way that doesn't, um, you know, overshadow the story itself. I think that's exactly the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think I agree with everything you're saying because it, I, I think it's a combination yeah. of the, the desire to have to push a political message into something where maybe a political message doesn't need to exist. Yeah. Or when like, you know, even if you look at the like first gen Marvel movies, you know, there are political messages there, but they're very like, you know, broad, mm -hmm. all encompassing, you know, like liberalism is good freedom is good you know nothing that most people except the most extreme people are going to get mad at um where the like the more hyper progressive message is far more incendiary to half the country 70 percent of the country than these other messages and then i think also baked into it which i don't even know if it's progressive i think i would just call it leftist i think a lot of the sort of leftist uh ideology i just don't think can actually construct very good storytelling at all because it seems like there is some idea that's anti like the hero's journey. And I don't know if that's just because, you know, an old white man wrote down the concept of the hero's journey. <laughs> well, I think, I think what it is in that case, but, I think in that case, it's because the hero's journey requires the heel, the hero to fail for a while and you can't have a girl boss fail. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's another aspect of it too. Cause it's, it's weird. Like, you know, you look at like the original captain Marvel and even, you know, the new Star Wars movies and, and things of that nature. It's like, you know, when you looked at older um, movies that featured female protagonists, you know, Kill Bill is one of my favorite, you know, the alien movies, things of that nature, you know, the first Terminators. It's like, yeah, they had a female protagonist, but she kind of went through the same arc that you'd expect any male protagonist to go through. And it feels like now with the, the modern female protagonist, they're not allowed to do that for this, for whatever reason, which does Can seem to be. Can you give an example of that? Oh, Ray from Star Wars. Well, yeah, Ray, Ray from Star, Star Wars, Wars and Captain Marvel. Those are the two things. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Yep, those are the big ones. Because it seems like now the, I don't. It's interesting. The, the, the I, Ghostbusters I from the Ghostbusters 2016 movie. That's another like, good example. Yeah, I think. I think it's interesting with the Disney stuff. It's like this weird conflation of the ideology for the reason that you were saying, Dev. But also maybe because they're all trying to make another Elsa character. 
It was the same thing in the remake of Mulan, which is really weird because like in the original Mulan, you know, obviously it's about her struggling to, you know, be in the army and then succeeding eventually. And this one, it's all about like, she has to find, you know, you just have to let go girls. You have to like, let go your inner emotions. And that was kind of like, so it all seems like it's trying to do this Elsa thing again. So it's very strange. And I think that is also what's hurting this, uh, you know, the leftist kind of narrative and storytelling. So- I, I linked an image and it's, it just says all games are political, says the extremely smart individual who can't tell the difference between Metal Gear Solid, Bioshock and this picture. And the picture is like Trump on Family Guy. That's a, that's a meme that's been around for a long time. And that's basically what's going on, right? Is you, the, the excuse that I see from a lot of left-leaning people about putting this stuff in games is like, well, everything's political. Art is political. It has, it has a message, all right? And it's like, well, yeah, but... You're not having a political discussion. You're just preaching with your art. Well, that's what's happening here. Is Step Brothers a political movie? I I'm not sure it is. I'm really <laughs> not everything sure is political, about that. Adam. Everything. Come on, political. really? The yeah. other guys. Well, I guess the other guys is a little political. Actually, there's something about this concept when they when people generally like on the far left talk about everything is political and always has been. There's something that's missing there, and I understand why it's missing because it'd be hard to articulate, which is that. When people are in a more stable environment or things seem to be more like uh, comfortable, or at least everyone has kind of a, a joint sense of community, it's easier for people to make critiques or criticize things without feeling like they're personally under attack. So an example of this is, you know, one of the most famous games of all time, Final Fantasy VII, has a lot of like anti-capitalist like very, very pro-environmentalist messages. I mean, the, the heroes of the game are literally uh, terrorists who are blowing up, you know, energy reactors for environmental causes. And if Final Fantasy VII came out today, everyone would say, oh my God, it's super woke. But no one really thought that back then because there wasn't this sense, this feeling that, oh my God, there's all this like hyper leftist stuff that's attacking me as an individual, attacking our country and demanding that we all adhere to some set of values. And because that environment didn't exist, it's like, oh, it's more okay, and people even love for you to have artwork, media, games that explore these narratives and have these political concepts. I I, I hear you. I, I do remember thinking like it really like Final Fantasy VII poured out pretty thick back in the day. Um, but I think I think you're close to it. I don't think it's quite it. I think the difference is almost if you're writing and creating things defensively, and let me give you a really specific example. Did anyone else here play Boyfriend Dungeon? Do you know this game? No, nope. no, sorry. Okay, so it's a roguelike indie. I game. was joking about the playing the dating sim. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's a it's a roguelike. Uh, there's a dating sim element to it. So you boot this game up, and and just to be clear, please be nice to this woman. She's always been lovely to me on Twitter. I'm happy mm-hmm. she got her game developed and was on Game Pass. I wish her all the success in the world. I'm telling you how I interpreted her work of art. So um, you, you boot it up, and it goes, hey, just letting you know, uh, this game has some themes with abuse. Is it okay if we show that to you? And I'm like, yeah, okay. Hey, how do you identify? Are you a man? A man? Are you a woman? Are you non-binary? I'm like, okay, woman. Click, click, click. Oh, hey, are you a romantic? Do you want to get these <laughs> romance scenes in this game about romance? Is that right. going to trigger you? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm here for the point. Let's go. Uh, and you, you play it. It's a great game. But then after all of this, like, so there. So the first thing is, as I was playing it, because it was written from this like position of, I, I think it's fair to say fear. Like you don't want to upset the audience. Like every single character in that game is like it was designed by the the leftist high committee to make sure it's perfectly, <laughs> you know, you've got different body sizes, mm-hmm. different races, you know, it didn't it felt extremely checklisty, right? right? And then as soon as she did all of that, I forget what the scandal was. It was like there was some theme of abuse or not asking for consent about something or your mom insulting you or being harsh to you that upset some people on tri- on Twitter. And mm-hmm. she ended up like in this apology arc for a way. So you take that and you compare it with what I consider to be the greatest work of art to come out in my lifetime, which is the Expanse novels. 
And this is written by James S. A. Corey, you know, a team of uh, two writers, Daniel Abraham uh, and Ty, uh, and they are ultra lips, right? And they're writing stories about life and death, and it is a metaphor for the Palestinians and Israel and war and peace and colonialism, and it is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's got that leftist message, but it is you're not sitting there with like the 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 impression that James S. A. Corey is trying to appeal to an audience. He has something to say about the cycle of violence and our, our, our willingness to destroy each other and throw our ideals out the window. And that's why it's so powerful. So I just, I, I think if someone is telling a story and it feels very genuine, I think that's art. I think people have a right to tell those stories and you as a consumer mm -hmm. can make a choice not to buy it. Where the reason I think progressives have largely failed in the gaming marketplace is because we're not telling stories that um that feel genuine to people. Yeah, no, that definitely definitely not. And it's you know it's interesting because I was actually, you know, just talking on tw arguing with some idiot on Twitter today about BioShock Infinite which is also about the cycle of violence and how if that game came out recently, uh, you know, in a post Floyd environment, it's, you know, you have a game where basically the first half of it, you're killing and fighting, you know, white supremacists who have basically enslaved a uh, black population, not enslaved, but, you know, subjugated a black population. And then in the second half of the game, the black population like becomes part of a revolutionary, a violent revolutionary communist group, which you have to fight against and kill, essentially. And the whole thing is kind of about this cycle of continual violence as opposed to, you know, trying to find a way productive forward. And I'm just trying to imagine if this game came out today or in the last couple of years, especially like around the BLM times, people would have just lost their mind about how disgusting it was to to look into those ideas, to look into that, those philosophical ideas. And even with Final Fantasy VII, I should add to that, is that a lot of these games... And I mean, I haven't read ex the Expanse, but I was, I'm guessing that like, like a lot of these very famous works of fiction that have politics and philosophy in them, generally the ones that are kind of very popular nowadays or still popular, they were usually advocating for something that would align with like a broad liberal, and I mean liberal, like liberalism consensus of like what is just and what is morally right, where a lot of this sort of more hyper progressive stuff today is significantly more divisive than any of those philosophical concepts that we think of. Yeah, I think that's well said. I, I do want to say Ken Levine took plenty of S for Bioshock uh, Infinite back in the day. He he followed me on Twitter recently. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I guess he's forgiven me for all that mean stuff I said. Oh, no, did he, did he say mean so, stuff about it? I did. You know, no, Dev, why? Des Destiny was talking about this the other day. And, yes. you know, Dev, you had noted on uh, Side Scrollers how I had changed. And I, Destiny said mm -hmm. something the other day that I thought really spoke to what happened to me. And it's like, when you get really deep into an ideology, you're expected to take on all these constellation beliefs. So you're part of the in-group. And maybe you join because you really, really agree on this one thing. But then to be in the group, you've got to agree on all these things all around it, right? And you may not even check to see if it's true. That very much happened to me. And I think it's a very radicalizing force on both sides. Yeah, I mean, that's the nature and the danger of tribalism is it sucks you into that exact process. Like, oh, well, yeah. you know, you support, like, that's how it all works. You, you believe in this one thing. So you have all these other people that believe in that one thing. But they're like, hey, if you want to be part of us, here's like the checklist of all the other things you have to support. And it's like very easy to just, just like, I don't think for most people, it's like a conscious process. It's like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm going to sell out to like believe it's like, it's like, oh, well, you know, these are good people. So they're probably right about all this other stuff. And then, you know, you get sucked in. Dev, you should do a video about that called The Purity Spiral. I think that would be very good. <laughs> I think I've already done two of those, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They're both great. I love them. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> so how did but, you... But yeah, well, oh, I, I guess real that. quick, like, like, no offense. I do recall, like, I think back to how you were in 2014. I, I didn't like you at all. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm it sure just... I didn't like you either. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was one of those situations like, oh, Jesus. But, um, at this, at, like, okay, when I was, when I was on... So, for those of you who don't know, since it's, it's been brought up twice, I'll quickly explain it. I was on Side Scrollers at Stuttering Craig's podcast. He brought it back from the 2000s, the screw attack guy. And he he was not around during Gamer Games. He was like, fill me in. I'm like, okay. Took took me two hours to give him like a high view. 
of what Gamergate was because there's a lot to it. And I, I made it very clear, like this is from the pro Gamergate point of view. So you probably want to get uh, the same kind of rundown from someone who is anti Gamergate as well. But this is, this is how it was from my side. This is how, this is what, what dig operations we did. This is the people we were looking in, we were looking at, this is why we look at them. And when it came to the harassment part of the conversation, I know that you you watched it, Brianna. Well, I got pushback for saying that there was even any harassment at all. Yeah, but there was. I mean, yeah, it, it's there's always harassment on the internet. All right, and and to be clear, like like there's there's two things when we say harassment, right? There's there's you know quote unquote harassment, which is criticism or mean words or being called names, right? And so and there's definitely people in Gamergate who got harassed, and that's all it was, right? Um, and then there's real harassment. And the real harassment is is being doxed. It's it's uh, it's death threats. It's things like that. And though and those happen too, right? It wasn't it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows during Gamergate. You know what I mean? There there yeah. were people out there who were actually interested in the real issues. And all of us, by the way, we said don't harass people constantly. Like I said it on every at the start of every video that I did. Sargon said it on his videos, right? Mundane Matt said it on his videos. I think the only person who didn't say it was uh, the internet aristocrat because he didn't care. He, he just didn't give a shit, right? But everyone that I know who was who was you know pro Gamergate said don't harass people, and yet it still happened because you got harassed, Brianna. Yeah. So it it is it, it's I don't like the fact that the mainstream narrative of Gamergate is all harassment because that's frankly bullshit. But to say that it didn't exist is also pretty bullshit. Well, I think and the generous thing I would say here, not even generous, but just flat out accurate, is you know, you in the second part of that clip, you really go through a lot of extremely um extremely relevant and concerning things about conflict of interest that happened uh, in the game industry with uh, various people uh, basically choosing game awards, uh, being in sexual relationships with various people, um, and, and really um, being in a position where it is utterly fair to call that into question uh, their obje objectivity and, and the value of that. And for me, like as deep as I was into it back then, I legitimately, hand to God, put it on the Bible. I had no idea about half that stuff. And I encourage people to watch it because I, I think it is a valid thing to have concerns about. The The good thing I would say is I know your position is um, they're still up to their old tricks. I don't know if I agree with you on that. Um, I think that overall the games press has so much less power today as YouTube stars have kind of taken over the role of advocate for the consumer and educating people and reviewing things that I kind of feel in some ways it was um, a collision course of credibility of some of the major outlets versus just normie gamers. And I think if you look at the the metrics of who gamers turn to nowadays, I think it's clear if they went with a different model. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I think, I think if they could be up to their old tricks, they would be. Yeah. And I think the sweet baby ink thing is them trying to be up to their old tricks, but it's mostly failing because they just don't have the pull they had 10 years ago. Yeah. I was going to ask, how did you get involved in the original Gamergate in the first place, Bray? Um, so the big thing was Samantha Allen uh, getting targeted and a whole bunch of other women that I cared about getting mm -hmm. doxxed and targeted. Um, you know, I, I know in that video, Dev, you brought up some mean things that Samantha said, and I, mm -hmm. I'm aware of this part of her personality. <laughs> but at the core of it, you know, she was trying to advocate for more women to be hired in the video game industry. And I think it's legitimate for something like Giant Bomb, uh, you know, like when they were part of Whiskey Media, I was one of their ultra subscribers. Like I was a mega fan of Giant Bomb. I wrote tons of their wiki. Um, you know, I donated every year. It really bothered me. The fact that every single time a hiring position came up, it was just never a woman, right? I would have loved a woman on the Giant Bomb cast. That would have been really meaningful to me. And she was like bringing that hiring bias to attention. I think that's a fair thing to do. And, uh, you know, basically a bunch of people ended up going after her and um, harassing her until she quit the industry. And then it happened to a whole bunch of other people. So um, I understand like you had a different experience, but for me, it, it genuinely was my friends were getting harassed and then I got harassed. Um, there's a polygon piece, I believe from 2013, I wrote that was the third um, most read story that year, according to my editor called No Skin Thick Enough. And it's just kind of outlining the blowback that women game devs are constantly trying to deal with.
Yeah. I mean, it, it's not hard to believe that both of these things are true, right? Yeah. So you can, there's definitely going to be instances where, um, where a woman in gaming gets harassed for no reason because people are being assholes and they're visible. Okay. It, it's not unbelievable because everyone gets harassed on the internet, right? It's sure. not unbelievable this would happen. But at the same time, then you have women who actually did things wrong. Yeah. And then they start, people started complaining like, Hey, you've, like, you've done this thing. And then they characterize that as harassment. Yeah. In my opinion, that is at least part of what happened to Zoe Quinn. I'm sure yeah. there are people sending really bad things to her. Of course, some, there's always going to be someone on a sock puppet account telling her to kill herself. But looking into people and noticing that they've actually been corrupt and done bad things and treated people poorly uh that and then saying you're a bad person for doing this and we like we don't want you in this community that's not harassment i, I completely agree mm -hmm. well i guess that's sort of the the problem that you know we were kind of talking about with the tribalism is that you know you have you know you either have an issue or people you know are sort of attacked and then you know the defensive clause come out on both sides and they kind of ignore the issues and they ignore what the other side's saying. It's like, yeah, so, you know, obviously people shouldn't be harassed on the, on the internet, but obviously, so on this, the same token, you know, it doesn't, it seems completely horribly unethical if, you know, all these different sites, you know, cr you know, work together secretly to craft a narrative to essentially defend someone for nepotistic reasons and then accuse everyone for being sexist if they don't, you know, fall in line with this narrative. Yeah. I mean, because that did happen. We, we got the, the Game Journal pros list. We know what they're saying behind the scenes. Someone leaked it to the internet. So that did actually happen. They were, they were crafting right. that narrative during Gamergate. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe you guys were being sexist, though. You think so? <laughs> no. Well, see, Adam, I'm not sure you were I'm around. Just, I'm then. waiting Sitch, for the Sitch, fight to were, break right? out. I'm just sitting Sitch. here, like, patiently waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to happen. What though. do you want? Do you want Devin and to start screaming? Well, at I each just other? look. It's a, it's like a hug box. It's like getting a little boring over here. But you know, I can, I can listen. Keep, I can ask going. a question that will uh, add some. Look, I, do it. I just look. Do I it. like con. Look, I'm a storyteller. Conflict drives a story. Like so, nobody wants to see or sit around and see you guys like. Yeah, we've kind of settled this conflict like you... it's a 10 year old conflict <laughs> well let me let me open the pandora's but look box here. supposedly someone came or by and tore the bandage off i was pitched gamergate 2.0 here so look, let, they let ripped me, your stitches out let me I, add I some conflict some here. drama if you want but no let me okay. add some conflict here okay so uh you had a conversation recently brie i listened to i oh, forget who boy. what the guy's name it was but you uh said that part of the reason that you don't like the like kind of the direction the internet progressives are going, which yeah. actually later in the conversation, I do want to, I am interested to hear like how you define liberal progressive and leftist, but that, that'll be, we'll keep that for later. Sure. Um, part of the reason you didn't like the direction the internet progressives are going currently after like also because of all the Israel stuff is that you feel like they've basically adopted Gamergate tactics. Yeah. And then I think when the host said, they asked you a question something about like, well, is that really Gamergate tactics? You you seem to be under the idea that before Gamergate, the left had never done anything like that. I don't think that's what I said. Um, I you think said, can Gamer you give me an example of like the left engaged in that kind of behavior before Gamergate? Well, I, I, I can tell you what I flat out think. I think Gamergate was really a cultural flashpoint of these kinds of tactics becoming extremely mainstream. And then I think the the Trump election happened in 2016, and I think they became extremely uh, mainstream, as like Steve Bannon brought that into uh, kind of the alt-right playbook to get uh, Trump elected. So um, I'm sure there are many examples of it happening uh, before then. Uh, you what are the tactics we're talking about, I guess we should? Sure. Uh, doxing people, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, kind of sending mobs of people after them to scream at them over differences of opinion, uh, death threats, rape threats, basically making the cost of speaking out so high, it's smarter to say, uh, stay silent, uh, having bomb threats called in to your public speaking appearances, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Different. I mean, I, I, I do recall Oh, uh, fuck. What, what, wasn't it like Milo was going to speak? This, this kicked it off way back in like 2016. Milo was going to speak at university and like they they ended up burning uh, a trailer that was on the campus down in their riot because they didn't really? want Milo there. Yeah. yeah. Did that you remember happen? this, right, Sitch? Oh my god. That gosh. did happen, yeah. There oh was, my yeah. god. There was like, there was dramatic like, like, 
pictures of just this. And this was before Milo became fire. as controversial as he is now. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I remember like, like Faith Goldie is very far right, but she was going to speak at a university. They pulled like, they, they called in bomb threats and they pulled the fire alarm on her. Like th this shit was happening all throughout pretty much like 2015 to like 2020. If you had a right wing person speaking somewhere, somebody was trying to stop them from doing it. And it got to the point that it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. He was supposed to speak. Miles was supposed to speak at speak at Berkeley. This was in 2017. There's an article from CNN that says Berkeley protest of Yiannopoulos caused a hundred thousand dollars in damage. Holy shit! So, yeah, Jesus. Man. So I don't. I don't know. I guess. Well, you know what? Well, what I, 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 I guess really quick, such this is interesting yeah. because a lot of the stuff, Brianna, you, like you don't seem to know about, right? This is kind of all yeah. passed you by. Yeah. And I remember I, I did a video uh, a couple months. No, maybe, maybe like a month ago where basically a 90 year old woman was canceled by some leftoids because <laughs> she didn't know what pro like what pronouns to use. Cause she's fucking 90. Right. right. And, and, and this is a story that went viral specifically on right wing Twitter. And you hadn't seen the story until you watched my video, Brianna. That's correct. And so mm -hmm. what, what I'm kind of realizing is you have a lot of people who are, who are in one political camp and they see a bunch of legitimately bad things happen to them, to their side. And they're like, what the fuck? But meanwhile, the other side doesn't see it. And that seems to be happening on both sides where it, it, it is the echo chamber. It is the media bubble. It is it, like people, bad things are happening to both left-leaning people and right-leaning people. But each side is only seeing the part of the story that makes them the victim. What are the bad things that are happening to the left-leaning people? What Go ahead, Brianna. You have an example? Uh, what are some th bad things? They're are losing their, to... their show on MSNBC. Yeah, well, not... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just choose not to get involved with that. Um, I do think there is still um, hiring bias that happens uh, just across the board. I think you can look at the numbers and, you know, I mean, you've got I, people I, are being debanked and you're comparing that to hiring bias. You're talking about Kanye West being debanked. Uh, a bank can choose not to work with an anti-Semite. I think that's entirely fine. There were people that were deep. I think uh, Fuentes was debanked. Kanye I think is lying about being debanked. Yeah. <laughs> if you look into that story, but um, but no, like I remember, I think it was around the time of Gamergate. There was remember it was in 2014. There's that guy, they did something, they landed some spacecraft on an asteroid or the moon or something. There was some space thing related. And the guy who was on the team that they interviewed, he was wearing like a shirt and it had a bunch of like kind of sexy women on the shirt. Mm -hmm. And do you remember this? And like everyone tried to get this guy like fired. It was like this huge controversy. Like how dare this guy wear a shirt with like attractive women on it in the workplace. That's so offensive to women everywhere. And it was like this huge controversy. And then it turned out that the person that made the shirt was actually like a personal friend of his who was a woman. And <laughs> like, and it was just, I just remember it was like this huge thing that was going on in 20, like 2014. Hey, it's like hey, is, around oh, the same how time about as Cliff Blazinski? Do you remember is, this? Uh, the is father Nick Fuentes the only one getting debanked? Cliffy, Cliffy B? Look. Yeah. Hey, 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 I hear tell of people getting debanked all the time. And look, I got no love for Nick Fuentes, but. Nick Fuentes is the only one getting debanked. That uh, doesn't seem correct. I don't. I don't know who's other. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I recall hearing of some other people doing it. Look, chat. If you can have, if you can give us a, some people that have been debanked, that would be great. So, mm -hmm. I, I believe it's more than just Nick Fuentes. So, no. But what I was going to say is like Cliffy B. Here's a good example. Uh, there was a picture of him. <laughs> in his office with his mouse pad and it was a mouse pad with like two big boobs under it for rich support mm -hmm. and he got so much <laughs> garbage from that uh from did he uh, actually from, yeah from sjw twitter and um you know uh yeah uh i think that's pretty silly because uh mm -hmm. he's actually a really good guy if you know him so and then I was also, saying Josh Moon, who I've never heard of. They're oh, saying Josh Moon's Dick, yeah, guy. Dick yeah, Masterson Farms. was debanked. There you go. Truckers, the truckers were debanked who did the trucker protests, which Dev, you're supposed to have a video on this. You should have <laughs> a long day, list of people who've been debanked. All the right? debanked people, Dev. So it's just like, I, I just, it's not really fair to say, oh, I don't care. Look, I don't care if Nick Fuentes gets debanked either. But like, just the problem is when you've got, milk toast conservatives that are being pitched as adolf Ooh. hitler and getting debanked that's the what problem. is an example yeah. of a quote-unquote milk toast conservative that is getting debanked 
Well, I don't know. Maybe Joshua. <laughs> I don't know. No. I don't follow up Joshua. on this. But my my I mean, point. My, Nazi, look, but he my is, only my only point is was we're talking about. Look, we're talking about getting debanked, which seems like could be catastrophic for your business versus some high, some, uh, some sketchy hiring practices. I mean, right? I, don't, I don't think anyone should be able to be debanked for political reasons. That seems kind of insane to me. I mean, people are saying Nigel Farage, that was in the UK and the UK is kind of fucked. So, yeah. I mean, but anyway, look, my, my point is just like comparing getting debanked to like, are people on the left getting debanked? What is what is the equivalent of getting debanked on the left? I'm just you know I'm trying to do like you know yeah. the the lady with the blindfold and the scales, uh, Lady Justice. That's what they call her. I'm trying to think like debanked over here, and you know they didn't hire enough women. I'm going hmm, okay, one seems a little heavier than the other, but I feel like on your show we we've talked about my belief that you know women do not get a fair shake in technology uh, a lot. No, I, so I don't want to re. Re, re go down that path again um i which is I don't which think, is worse getting debanked or not women not getting a fair shake and i think just statistically um you can look at them the i i think statistically there is an exponentially larger number of women that are mistreated than people that get debanked every year yeah i would argue it's probably not about uh politics like left versus right as much as behavior right um you know, like when I work with my particular bank, which is uh, uh, amalgamated for my pack, you know, there are certain values they have, there are certain standards they have. I have to read that and I have to abide by them, by the way I, I behave. This is just, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it feels like a mountain out of a molehill, but like Dev said, maybe I'm missing something. Right. No, I'm just, there's, I do think that there's not as, as many ramifications on the left any as many cultural ramifications on the left like i don't think left-wing business owners worry about getting debanked i mean you're partially true i think we've now seen the the it's not debanking but we've now seen um the cultural ramifications come in post october 7th right because a lot of progressives yeah. have said a lot of weird shit about israel and, and did any of them get debanked no, but they are getting fired. They are getting yep. expelled from universities. They are losing, yep. you know, positions of of influence. So, yeah, but I mean, look it, how long, it is look, moving in. Look, look how much. Look how Claudine long it took Gay exactly. had to go through just to get fired. When she should have been fired, and I think you, I think we even talked to you about this, Bree, that you agreed that she should have been fired just for her performance, 100%. and then yet it took like all of that, you know, controversy about her plagiarizing to get her out. And then yeah, even then, she so she just got like demoted to like her previous job. She still works. She didn't at Harvard. get to bank. She still makes. Look, she's the highest paid teacher at Harvard. She makes right. a president's salary I, to I teach. Think, I right. feel if this is your concern, I feel very strongly that you are going to see for these fringe people out here. They're defending Hamas and cheerleading the Houthis, and now even this last week, y'all, we've seen them like actually standing for Hezbollah. Like, I at least, like, I vehemently disagree with the, the characterization of Hamas as freedom fighters. But, like, if you're talking about Hezbollah, I mean, my God, these people have left any kind of reality that is true. And they are going to be facing professional consequences. And I don't think I'm the only person uh, on the left that's woken up and has gone, holy crap, we've got an actual MAGA like on our side that is dangerous to democracy we've we've got to you know take action so mm -hmm. i think you're gonna see i think you're gonna see a little bit less uh kumbaya we're all one big team on the left i think you're gonna see uh some consequences i like i definitely hope so and that i mean i agree that after you know october and then especially after the hearings with the college presidents there does seem to be some sort of acknowledgement forming on the mainstream and on the left to acknowledge that, you know, maybe all those people we just kind of poo-pooed as woke college kids and didn't like ignore it. Maybe that was a bad idea. Maybe we yeah. should have been paying attention to those people. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I guess I don't know if it's going to manifest into anything greater. I mean, I, I just saw, you know, I was, you know, I was listening to, you know, you and Connor yesterday and I was looking at myself, you know, Hassan's coverage of of Israel is insane and he is still basically he basically tweeted out that he is totally fine with Hamas existing as long as Israel exists <laughs> essentially was like what I got from the tweet that he put out 
And he was, you know, blatantly supporting people and he still does support a YouTuber who, you know, said that what Hamas did was very based and good. And he doesn't really seem to have got any sort of repercussion. And he's, I think, the largest political streamer in the world, or at least the United States. And it's very scary to me that this is what like a lot of young kids are listening to. He didn't get fair. debanked, Sitch? He did not get debanked, no. <laughs> oh, wow. He's not no. getting debanked. No, I mean, I think he get a slap on the wrist. A, a communist, but that's a different story. It, it it seems like we're not talking about Sweet Baby anymore. <laughs> no, we kinda but it's fine. Gone, we gone off the, okay, yeah. Listen, right. well, look, I, look, do you have more do. to say about Sweet Baby? Because that's why I came I mean, here. We haven't kinda. talked about the Kotaku article yet. We haven't. We okay. Haven't. And, there, yeah. and also, there, there is some, there is some, uh, some conspiratorial deep diving we can do about Sweet okay. Baby. Okay. Well, please, we, what's the please. Kotaku article, and then what's the de- what's the conspiracy? Oh, you want which one do you want to do first? I don't, I, I, I guess let's start article? with Kotaku. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can dig it up. So basically, uh, where is it? Hold on. <laughs> What, you need some notes? Sweet Baby Inc. does doesn't do what some gamers think it does. That's the name of the yeah, article. Yeah, that's that's Kotaku. the article. Yeah. No one it. no one company is forcing diversity into all your favorite video games. Yeah. Well, I'll, I mean, I guess I would agree. Chat. I haven't yeah. read this article, but I guess I would agree that no one company is forcing diversity into your favorite video games. But there definitely seems to be a a very broad push in all media to kind of shove Mm-hmm. the leftist version of diversity into all media. So, so when, when I was in yeah. side scrollers, I outlined that it, it, Craig, Craig pointed out on that appearance that they hadn't, no one, no one in the games press had talked about the sweet baby controversy, despite it going viral, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I said, listen, it's been a week. Give it maybe another week at the most. And they'll start talking about it. And that was just based off of the Gamergate experience. It's like, listen, right now they're trying to make it go away. It's not going away, so there's going to be articles, and where they're going right. to come to, they're, they're going to come to the, to the defense of their friends. Um, and you know what? In five days, this article came out. So it was I pretty much had it on on the notes. You called right? it, yeah. And as soon as as soon as this article came out, it was kind of like the dam broke, and then a bunch of other articles came out in the next few days. Um, it 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 wasn't nearly as coordinated as the gamers are dead thing from 2014, but it did feel like they were all. Like, like someone was waiting for someone to, t- to kind of take the first plunge. And then as soon as they did, they all felt safe in putting their articles out. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, since so you were around in Gamergate, you remember the Gamers Are Dead thing? Of course. I mean, oh. I wasn't making content back in those days, but like I was lurking. Sure. Yeah. Wild times. Uh-huh. So if you go over this article, let's see if I can scroll down a little bit. And I you, wish you I have... listen. I wish I was making content because I remember in 2014. <laughs> okay. When My- Milo Yiannopoulos picked up the mantle of Gamergate and I since I was a person who had been interested in politics for most of my life, knew who Milo Yiannopoulos was or knew who Breitbart News was and said, okay, that's a, this should not be the mantle that gets, you know, picking up the Gamergate movement. And I could see sort of the gears turning there, but sadly I didn't have a channel to, to raise alarm well, to that. But I, I recall Total Biscuits actually saying that exact thing. He's like, listen, good for him. Yeah. He, he basically said like, listen, it should be, you know, more center lefty media coming out and saying something's wrong here because you are ceding this entire cultural ground to the right. And that's what happened, right? right? Yeah, a exactly. whole bunch of, a, a whole bunch of right-wing personalities came out of Gamergate. Yep. Um, but basically this article, can I find the, the, the specific passage? Hold on. Can I find, da, 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 da. Okay, give me 30 seconds. I'll, I'll do okay. a search. Let's read some super chats. Such I, we've probably got a bunch of them here and we only sure. have a half hour left, right? Oh, no, yeah, I know. There, I know there are at least an, an hour, hour and, and a half. half. Oh, okay. We got plenty there, of time. There are some that are addressed to me or Brianna directly. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're going to we're going to talk to Rudyard at seven, right? Yeah, we got an hour and a half. I yeah. messed up. That's I, I know. Blame daylight 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 just savings, messing with all yeah. our minds. Yes. I blamed. <laughs> I know. Daylight okay. savings is the worst. Bri, right. Bri, I don't. You know, I, I don't mean to get confrontational, but I do think like part of your red pilling is coming to the acknowledgement that there is like a double standard there. I mean, there's an obvious double standard, right? Like, uh, the left gets, the left does insane shit and gets slaps on the wrist because they have the cultural power and the right does, you know, milk toast stuff and they get debanked. That's, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> right. Look, you, yeah, see, this this is where we say, look, well, you're would not. You, would you agree that, like, it seems like when, it doesn't seem like to me that I can really think of an example of it, 
too many examples where someone who's pushing kind of one of these leftist narratives, you know, before the October stuff with Israel, um, was really getting in trouble in any sort of mainstream way for pushing some kind of like hyper woke stuff. Is it a crime to have a really extremist position on like diversity? No, but I'm saying that like people that we were on the right that were pushing things uh, that were, I'd say we have more milk toast or at the same level of extreme were definitely getting like canceled and attacked like yeah, violently by the mainstream. You know, like Jordan Pearson, you know, I, I don't really agree with the direction he's gone now, but when he first like came on the scene in 2016, 2017, he was saying like very milk toast, you know, centrist stuff. And he was just dragged vilified. by vilified by the mainstream media is like this horrible alt-right nazi it was just wild to me and i just i it just seems like i mean I, I would assume that you'd agree that that the left definitely seems to have like a lot greater cultural power in terms of you know m the media attacking people in this way I don't know it's really hard to argue against an anecdote, right? Because um, I just I kind of just have a different worldview. So I think all I can do is really just say my position is I think the right wing has a tremendous amount of cultural power too. Um, you know, media is failing um, just up and down the board. Yeah, Dev, I think your channel is a really good example. Like you have a much larger audience than a lot of uh, left wing creators, and I think that's because you're. You're really skillful at what you do. So, um, oh, well, thanks. I, I do think there is, I, I think, and not to say Dove is right wing, because I don't think that's true, but I think <laughs> there is a, I think there is a, I think that the right has a cultural force that um, maybe I'm giving them more credit for it than you are. Well, let, let me kind of I, narrow I found, in. I found the. I well, found hold, the hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, okay, before you move on. Yeah. Okay, so, let me let, let me narrow in the claim here. Sure. So, like, yeah, there. It definitely seems like you know the right definitely has cultural power in some areas, um, you know. But like, you know, you had like the Bud Light protests and things, that, you know, backlash and all this stuff. But it definitely seems like, and I, I, I guess I would be very surprised if you disagree, that the mainstream cultural forces have been completely dominated by the left for the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would agree so, with that. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I guess that's what I'm referring to when I talk about like the cultural power, the left seems to be stronger than the right is in terms of these mainstream forces. Yeah. I'd be really curious about your opinion on this, but this is just the, 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 the broadest 30,000 foot view of how I would see this. Like, it doesn't surprise me. Like a lot of the communist types and they're like, we need a revolution. We need a second civil war in this country. And I'm like, you know, if I had to bet on the extreme right and the extreme left for a uh, civil war in the United States, I don't think it's going to be the communists that win. Like the right is better at a lot of things. Uh, I am in car culture. This is uh, massively dominated by the right wing. Um, I particularly, I enjoy watching gun reviews, right? This is massively dominated by the right wing. So um, I think when it comes to art and comic book movies and video games, I think it's really true that there are a lot more leftists there. Uh, uh, just because I think that's what attracts people to those kinds of careers. And I think there's a real deficiency that uh, right-wingers tend to have in being attracted to that. So I just, I think it's this base competence that we have uh, in our interests, if that makes sense. Did mm. oh, I, I, no, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I mean, since you know, you know more about personalities and psychology than I do, I think at this point, mm -hmm. we're basically, I, I, this, this probably tracks where like a more conservative person tends to have a less creative personality, generally speaking. And so they're not really drawn towards the arts, which means they're, well, they're less open to games. new experiences, which I guess correlates yeah. with kind of creativity, but not yeah. necessarily directly. Yeah. yeah. So they're less likely to be making video games or to be making comic books, or making movies, you know, all these areas kind of have become more, more left-wing spaces. Right. Mm -hmm. That, that, that broadly tracks, I think, I think also is that once you have a certain population of one group, one political group in a space like that, they will start pushing out the, the, you know, the, the people who have minority opinions. So even if there was a more conservative person who is interested in, in being creative, he's going to, it's going to be a, an, an uphill battle for him to get, to do it. Right. Like mm -hmm. well, yeah. a great example is like all, all the right leaning um, actors being pushed out of Hollywood. 
the past five to 10 years, right? Shit like that, I think, is kind of what we're talking about here. Well, I, I think what's going... Well, first of all, regarding the Civil War thing, I mean, I, if there was, quote, a Civil War... And it was like a right versus left civil war, well, <laughs> I, you know, or at least let's say the socialist versus the MAGA crowd or whatever. Um, you know, I, I agree that I think the right would pretty easily win that because, you know, we looked at <laughs> Occupy Wall Street and considering, you know, the socialists are very anti-hierarchy in the first place. I don't think they're going to be able to marshal any sort of fighting force. So, uh, you know, Occupy Wall right. Street versus but, January 6th. Like who yeah. wins? Yeah. It's obvious, right? Well, yeah. January, but that's even actually January 6th was a one day spontaneous event where Occupy Wall Street was people who were like out there for months and they still couldn't, they couldn't even get a list of demands together. It's just like ludicrous. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, so it's, it's interesting because, like, yeah, you have leftists. We're talking communists here. Communists, right. they talk all about revolting against the government, but right wingers actually do it. Like they, they drive their trucks up to parliament, they riot inside the Capitol. Like they actually do this shit. They don't go. just talk about it. Well, leftists like to burn shit down. But uh, yeah, but, putting, but do they, do they ever burn down? Like, did they ever burn down the Capitol? You know, well, I mean? no, like, they tried to. I mean, they did try to in Portland. They they tried to burn down the federal courthouse, <laughs> were unsuccessful because <laughs> the police stopped <laughs> them. But anyway, but regarding sort of what you were saying, Dev, I think what's important here is that you know you, you've had for a very very long time, just not even because of like malicious intention, but just because. I think people of different political persuasion, I do think that political, a lot of politics and a lot of people's political persuasions is rooted in their personality and their personality differences. And I think just because of that, you would get a situation where you get a lot more people on the left would be more attracted to doing things like making movies and making art and also, you know, being a teacher at college and a lot more right wing people are more interested in like, you know, starting a business, joining the military, sort, sort of going in those directions. And it sort of led that, these two, you know, these various institutions that kind of shift in the various directions they did over the years, um, even though obviously everyone is making fun of the military for being woke now, but that's a different story. Um, but the problem, I guess, with that is that that's kind of fine-ish until you get sort of an extreme movement that kind of, that that exists on the left or the right that starts, you know, growing inside a left or right wing dominated space because people tend to overlook the extremists on their side because they don't want to give ammunition to the bad guys on the other side. So it seems like that the left was overlooking the radical socialist element in all these college campuses and even in sort of, you know, like, uh, you know, in a lot of the woke sort of diversity uh, ESG sort of crap that companies are now kind of inculcated with. They sort of overlooked that until it's like almost too late. And now this, now it's like, harder to, to tear out this socialist parasite that's already, <laughs> you know, rooted so deeply in all these institutions. Such. I feel particularly qualified to, to like, as a cautionary tale of how violently and aggressively uh, unrewarding it is to criticize your own side. Ex exactly, and exactly. Ever yeah. since, you know, like, look, my, my principles, my politics have not changed one damn bit uh, uh, since before October 7th. Uh, I don't think it's crazy to uh, support terrorism and to support geostability, generally speaking. And um, my God, like the blowback I've gotten over Israel-Palestine is just insane, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I think you're correct that there are a lot of people that don't want to hear it. To be fair, the Dev, do you think, because you get a lot of blowback from right-wingers that I see for criticism that strikes me as very mild. So, I mean, I think you get this to a certain extent as well. Yeah, a lot of it's just going to be loyalty-based, right? Yeah. If someone thinks that you're on their side, then you, then you critique their side, they just get mad, right? Yeah. And that's been, that's been a, like, I've had, I, and Sitch, I know that you've seen this because I've talked to you about it and, and you've been involved in some of it over the years, mm -hmm. Sitch, where it's like, I'll post, you know, a liberal take and people like lose their fucking minds in my, in my comments. And I'm like, I've been saying for 10 years, I'm a liberal. What did you expect? We're like, what did you think that meant? <laughs> and they all, and they thought I was dog whistling. They thought like, cause, right. cause back in like, like, like back in the day, like, like 2016, 2017, whatever it was, Nick Fuentes called himself a liberal. He wasn't, but right. that was, that was his gambit. Right. Mm -hmm. And lots of people in that, like people who were not liberals in that era called themselves liberals until they got established and they, and then they went mask off. 
It it's is interesting. Fun. It does. It does seem like almost everyone's mask off nowadays. Like everyone knows. <laughs> like there is this because you're right. Back in the day, Nick Fuentes and a lot of other people were like all, and even people on the left were all pretending to be liberals. And it turns out, like, no, we're actually like white nationalists or we're actually communists. Like it seems like all the masks have kind of slipped by now. Yeah, mm. I, I definitely have a, a more right leaning audience than I am, and they definitely get angry whenever I critique sure. the right. That's so I mean, sure. so yeah. do, so do we to some extent. We you know. You know, half our audience criticizes us when we criticize not. Well, that's not fair. I'd say 30 percent of our audience gets mad when we criticize Trump or something. So that's fine. <laughs> but listen, yeah, you got to yeah. just stay, you know, gotta well, be true. Sitch, Sitch, I did a video on this yesterday and my video yeah. on this yesterday explains this entire phenomenon. However, the competency required... crisis. This is yes. a really good video. People should watch this. Oh, what? The competency crisis? Yeah, I really like it. Oh, well, thank this. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Listen, we have to talk about Mencius Moldbug, though, to really explain it. Hey, I just looked up so some we headlines have to bring up here. Again. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I got the New York Post. J.P. Morgan Chase accused of purging accounts over convert uh, over conservative activists. I got Reuters. U.K. alleged probe bans uh, banks blacklisting clients over political views. I've got Newsweek. Stop the troubling trend of politically motivated debanking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, look, these so, are reputable do, do you, institutions: Reuters, Newsweek, the New so York says, Post. Look, somebody's see. talking about this. It says, according to this article, that Enrico Tario, who I believe is one of the Proud Boys guys, right? Yeah, you think he's uh, in jail now? But yeah, yeah. Joe Biggs and Laura Loomer and Martina Marcota discovered their accounts at Chase were closed within weeks of each other. Um, without satisfactory explanations. I mean, we, how do you feel about that, Brie? Do you think that like if some like one of those people should have had their accounts closed? I think uh, send me the article. I will read about it, and we can talk about it next time. I'm well, on. I just I, mean, I want to yeah. I want to know what the like what the left wing like left wing accounts aren't getting debanked. They're not even being threatened with debanking. So look, the right is illegal, and the left is like they get hand slaps. That's my only point. So sure. I just, I need to read about it. I mean, come on, y'all. You know, if, if I read about it, I've given Dev a million points today because I've read his stuff. I've done my homework. I've thought about it. It seems well thought out. He's got a good argument. If you've yeah. got that here, I'll give it to you. I just don't know enough to say one way or the other because I haven't read it. So as a general rule for, for, from my point of view, like there, like there are some instances where if you do something that's really bad socially, there's probably going to be some social consequence, but there's certain layers of society where, where there should not be a social consequence taking place on that layer. And I think your ability to use banks is one of those layers. It's like, okay, may, mm -hmm. you know, may, maybe someone shits on you on Twitter. Maybe you get like a hate mob after you because you, you gave a really dumb take. Okay. That's, it sucks, but it's just, you know, it's free speech. Right. But should you be debanked? Like, I think the answer to that is just blanket no. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think that I agree with that completely. So, so what was Act it? Blue is a payment processor that is, it's here in Massachusetts, and it is essentially the, it is, um, I don't want to say it's a monopoly, but it is nearly a monopoly as far as payment processing if you're donating money to uh, to Democrat candidates, right? And Act Blue has decided to not work with certain people after they've uh, said things or done things that are just beyond the pale that it, it, it doesn't represent their values, right? People calling for political violence, things like that. This is their identity. It's their brand. They are a democratic payment processor for campaigns. Uh, the exact same thing with Amalgamated, which is, you know, my PAX bank. You know, they have certain standards and they are going to kick out the crazies. I I don't think that's, I mean, A, because you've got alternatives if you don't like that situation. But I, I don't think it's unreasonable for an institution to say we've got a reputation here um, and we do judge who we work with based on public behavior. That doesn't seem unusual to me. Yeah, but would you separate... communists don't damage their reputation and anyone on the any conservative does that's just a a truth what is the truth could you say that again Co working with communists working with far left activists doesn't mm -hmm. hurt their reputation working with with people who support palestine and are going to march around campuses yelling from the river to the sea is not going to hurt their reputation I don't know if that's true. 
I, I really don't. I think you're going to see consequences for that. Well, I would love to see, I would love to see the consequences. I don't know what they are. Yeah. So I, I guess, I guess what, here, maybe I can, maybe I can see, see what you're saying here, Adam. It's something like, you know, the, the craziest <laughs> people Damn on the, you. what? No, I, I agree with you. Adam. I, just, so... I, just, I agree with you. I, I want to reword it. Basically the craziest people on the left do not seem to get socially punished the way that the craziest people on the right do. That's basically it. And that does seem to be just true. Yes. Yeah. Factually yeah, correct. I, I would probably go with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, I'll... there's no downside to being crazy, a crazy leftist. There's no downside to being Hassan. Right. There's, there's no, no downside. downside there's, there's no way downside. Less of a downside. There's no downside to questioning whether or not rapes took place on October seventh, which you but have plenty should. of far left activists uh, like openly doing that and suffering no downside whatsoever. I completely agree. I completely. It's Marxism, agree. Adam. It's all just Marxism. That's more but, Sitch's thing. Look, I. <laughs> but don't you think, to an extent? I mean, I don't know. I think. Generally what? speaking, my march of the last 10 years has been, especially now that liberalism, small liberalism, and by liberalism, I mean like open debate, open expression of ideas, discussing things. Now that that seems to be more and more attack all the way over the world, maybe the answer is more of us taking a breath and developing a thicker skin for hearing ideas and working with people that we don't agree with. Look, I'm, da I'm down with that. I'm yeah. down with that. I'm totally down with that, but I just yeah. think obviously society is structured unfairly. And if we don't point it out, then we can't get back to that structuring things fairly. Well, Deb, this is where I, I think it comes back to Gamergate and I, I'm speaking here more as like just a, a practical point of view. Like I obviously have a different position personally about like our you know, typical white ma white male straight guys being disrespected by the video game industry, right? I don't feel this is not a priority for me in the same way. But it's just objectively true that a lot of people out there do feel that way. And, you know, the video game industry is in a really tough financial spot right now. And I think what makes more sense is to I, I think the future is us learning to get along with each other and trying to be a little bit more open to to each other's perspectives on things on the left and the right like i think that a lot of the gamergate stuff would not have blown up as much if there hadn't been this kind of callous disregard for some of the points that were being raised yeah, that sounds about right. I see. I, I can I can tell you why a lot of guys feel that way though, because I also feel sure. that way, and I, and I did yeah. ten years ago. At some point, I am going to do probably for the anniversary. I'm going to do the the big ten year anniversary of Gamergate video, right? But the TLDR of it was that, and and I think my experience is pretty universal. I'm pretty sure people who are in their 30s right now in the chat they can confirm or deny, but I think it's a pretty universal experience. Growing up in the 90s, if you were a kid who played video games, you were bullied. It was not popular yep. it was not cool it was not that. yeah 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 so and 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 basically the only people who were let's say leaders of the community that had your back were people who like wrote in nintendo power or something and then mm -hmm. they eventually became the games journalists and i i always go back to this one example where you have um jeff Keeley on fox news defending the sex scenes in mass effect from conservatives who were basically coming for video games saying they were satanic and they were evil, they were poisoning kids' minds, they were too violent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That was the narrative of what gaming was in the 90s and the 2000s, is that it was this kind of demonized hobby the same way that D&D &D was before it. Um, and so if you're the kind of person who was bullied, you didn't get any play with girls, you had you were considered like a, a nerd or a loser by the wider culture. And the only people in your corner were, were the leaders of your subculture to have them, to have those same leaders turn around and basically throw you under the bus, which is what happened in 2014, because we were all like, we were all saying, Hey, there's corruption here. What's going on. And the same people that we trusted said, no, you're wrong. Not, not like they, they came after the gamers for, for criticizing their friends. Like that, yeah. that I think everyone felt like it, it, it was, it was a, an immense betrayal. And I think that's why so many people were so passionate about Gamergate is because they grew up with being shit on by everyone 
if be, because of being a gamer and then the one person that always had their back or the one group of people that always had their back suddenly didn't have their back anymore yeah and so everyone felt an, an immense amount of betrayal back in 2014 i can i can understand that i, I genuinely can I, I think, you know, for the other side, it was, you know, women love video games the same way those guys do, right? And I think it just breaks your heart to see, like, the giant bomb thing, right? To to so rarely see yourself in the gaming press. Like, it broke my heart year after year when I would see the Game of the Year awards coming out. And just all of them, always so male-centric with the same predictable themes and games I loved and a lot of my friends loved just being overlooked or made fun of because people like that weren't in the room to offer a different point of view, right? So I don't know. I think something I have clarity on 10 years later is I, I can at least see the humanity in the people that you're talking about. And I think that I think that is worth considering. Right. Um, so I, I hear you. No. Yeah, that, that all makes sense, too. Just to clarify for the chat, just real yeah. quick. Yeah. So so in my in my school year, back when I was in school, there was exactly one girl student who played video games. No one else did. And the rest of us made fun of the guys that played video games. The rest of them made fun of the guys that played video games. So, yeah, there, there was definitely a I think it's because and, and, and I think that's actually a pretty common experience for people who are who are in my age range where it's like. Girls didn't grow up, the ones that were around us didn't grow up playing video games. So to suddenly see them in video games, it definitely felt like they were that, that, that they were moving into a space that they had previously ridiculed us for for enjoying. And so there was definitely a lot, a lot of a lot of defensiveness that was there mm -hmm. for sure. Well, that definitely I mean, that's definitely my experience as well. I think part of it is that, you know, men and women do have on average different ways of interacting with each other. And essentially you had women, and which is fine, but you had women entering a male space and not liking the male interaction, which is usually a lot more aggressive and brash and insulting towards each other. And that's just not the way that the general woman interaction is, which is fine, but that's kind of, I think, what happened. But on top of that, you know, kind of, you know, in terms of like the white people being upset or the white male, you know, gamer being upset, you know, in the clip that we just watched, you know, in that same talk, you know, that woman talks about how she literally says that, you know, there's too many white male gamers who are crying. She uses, and I'll see if I can actually find the slide here. She has like, she has like an, ex like a little picture of someone from the Simpsons crying about like not wanting to eat their vegetables or something. And she, that's how she casts like white male gamers because, you know, you're replacing their main character with someone who's not uh, a white male. Oh, there it is. And the, like, I, I don't know if this is intentional or just like living in a bubble. I think it's just living in a bubble. The problem isn't, you know, white male gamers or white male nerds are not sitting around like, oh my God, how dare you have, you know, not a white male protagonist. That's not like, no one cares about that. It's either the replacing of characters that were pre-established and recasting them as a different gender or a different race combined with the fact that there seems to be this attitude of, oh, well, we, we can't just have like a black person in this game. We have to have a black person in this game who's fighting against a system of racism against them that's being perpetuated by the status quo of evil white people. And that's really what's setting people off. It's not just, you know, the race swap or the gender swap. So I'm actually very happy that we're back at, at the main conversation because I did find that quote from the Kotaku article. Okay, okay? what was the quote you so, wanted to So here's the thing. Th this is why everyone got really mad at this article because this exact same person that was in the clip, this is Kim Belair, the same person in the Kotaku article said, Sweet Baby is at its core a narrative development company. That means anything from script writing to narrative design to narrative direction to story reviews. One of the things we do offer is cultural consultations or authenticity consultations. For us, that generally means that we might be asked to look at a story if there's a character in it who is marginalized in a certain way and the studio wants us to connect them with a consultant who can bring in authenticity. But the, but the perspective is never that we're coming in and injecting diversity. For the most part, it's the reverse. It's that a company has created a character and they want to make that character more representative and more interesting. So the line that she puts forward in this article is that this is something that companies want, right? However, the clip that we watched was her saying, 
go to your marketing department and tell them what kind of a shit show you'll have if you don't hire us. And that's what happened, basically, is that this article came out, this clip went viral, and people realized that the two positions don't really mesh together. I agree. How does more representative just not mean more stereotypical? I mean, that is the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's so, a giant that problem. Yeah. It's like, how, so yeah, yeah you, have, you have a black character. Make them more representative. Well, they're already black. What do you do? Like you make them yeah. hood? Like, oh, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, make it them make more stereotypical. <laughs> like it's yeah. so, it's so offensive. It like throws in the garbage everything that we've worked for. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about something towards the end of this article, uh, just to try to bring a little bit of balance here, because I think this speaks to extremism. And, uh, you know, uh, Sitch, I would love to hear you take this on uh, directly. We're at the very end of this. And, you know, full disclosure here, I think there is... I think a fair critique of this writer based on their their Twitter statements might be that they're not like a, a balls and strikes straight down the middle, just going to call it like I see it kind of person, <laughs> right? Just uh, so the chat knows, what she said on Twitter was that you can't be racist against white people. Okay. So for many, many this reasons. This is, wait, wait, I'm sorry. This is the author of the article? Said the that? author of the yes. article, basically. Yeah. So, she, she went you know, viral for that, yeah. She right. went and interviewed uh, the devs at Sweet uh, Sweet Baby Inc. and then basically got some quotes for them. And then the the piece ends with her going back and saying, "Well, here's what." And going back to the Sweet Baby Inc. Discord and saying, "Here's what they do: A, B, and C. This has changed your opinion on anything." And being confronted with this new information. Um, from the way she tells in the article, they completely blow past it. They disregard it, conflicts with what they want to believe. And, you know, minds have not been changed here. And, you know, I do want to say respectfully, this, this feels like a very, very familiar pattern, right? Like you're looking for, um, you're looking for a monster and you go and find one and nothing is going to change your mind. Um, you know, I think, you know, Adam, this is why, like with the banking situation, I, I do think it's important to take time to read stuff, to make up your mind and to really think through it fairly. We we all need the ability to change our mind like that. No, I I mean, I agree. I just, I think it's, well, it's pretty obvious that there is a, a cultural bias, that the, the, the left has a lot of, like massive amounts of cultural power now. And I just see people on the left kind of denying it i even even in your situation because you're kind of in a rare situation now where you're constantly being attacked for calling out the far left on twitter and look i admire you for that Thank but you. i i think we probably would agree that the modus operandi for the people coming at you is to categorize you as a right winger so that they can they can characterize you yeah yeah so that they can characterize you as a right winger they know that the right wing is culturally very powerless right now and that you can eventually be debanked like that's the strategy yeah no i think that's really perceptive uh you know they uh they uh if they believe i'm a right winger they can disregard they can do anything to, to you yeah yeah i think that's well yeah. said this is the ontologically evil meme you guys have seen that going around right well, I, I know the, of yeah, it. Yeah, the older meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's 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 an older meme, but it still checks out. Yeah, it still checks out. Well, well, yeah, see, but, basically, yeah. the the idea is like, if, if you ever talk to somebody who's very you know ideologically in one direction, they they'll say, well, of course I'm going to do good things because good things are good, and you, you can do bad things to bad people because they're bad. Like, it's it's that sort of thing, right? Where right. where it's like, I, I remember I, this is this is an example from the right wing. I was talking to a right winger about um negotiating a deal on the whole border wall situation right and it's like and 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 apparently like there was some sort of, I, I i don't you guys know the story better than me i'm sure but there was a bit like a, bi a bipartisan bill that just died and it had some funding for patrolling the border right yeah and the idea and the idea was that the, Re the republicans were, were going to get their border funding and the democrats were going to get something else in exchange and i was talking to somebody on twitter a few months ago who was very far right and he said well, why should we have to negotiate that? Because like, like why should, why should we negotiate? Because very clearly what, what, what the Democrats want is bad and what we want is good. So, so if we negotiate with bad people, then we will get more bad than we should have than if we just did our thing. And it's like, okay, I've seen left-wingers say the exact same thing yeah. where it's like, yeah. if, if, if your politics contains all of the good and your enemy's politics contains all of the bad, well, then there is no reason to ever negotiate with them. You might as well just kill them at that point. Right. Well, and also yeah. that's double funny because, um, 
you know, the, the, the quote, the thing the left got that they wanted, um, even though Biden obviously wants to fix the border because I think it's going to destroy his ability to win the election if he doesn't, but was the funding for Ukraine um, and I guess also Israel was supposed to be the thing the left wanted. And it was the right, the Republicans that said that they weren't going to push, I think, for funding Ukraine anymore until they fixed the border. So they were the ones asking for those things to be tied together. It wasn't the Democrats. So the person you're talking to is doubly uninformed. <laughs> <laughs> so can I take just a second and respond to one of your super chats for four hundred dollars? Because I I have a lot. Burn. Oh dollars. my god! That's oh J- my god! J Mac four hundred. Surrogate father J Mac. Thank you so much for the four hundred dollars. Let me read it and then you can respond, Bray. Yeah. Uh, Bringing all the woo bucks this week. There you go. Yeah, well, hold Listen. on. We and before you go, we have to address the aid and paladin stuff. Obviously, oh, we've sure. been it's wrongly accused. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We need a race. We need a race. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, J Mac for four hundred dollars. The our actual <laughs> ex executive producer. All right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> says for a lot of us nerds, gaming wasn't just a hobby. It was a sanctuary from our shitty lives. It was a way for us to take control, meet like minded people, and keep us sane. Then people we viewed as outsiders come in and tell us that we were the ones that were unaccepting and previous gaming outlets all of a sudden agreed. Yeah, I think that's def. I mean, I agree with that. And I think that's definitely what a lot of gamers felt like in 2014. And that's why so many yep. people got very yep. defensive and angry at the Gamergate stuff. But but Jay Mac, I, I really want you to try to hear me here. I, I feel the exact same way you do. I was a deeply, deeply isolated lonely kid in Mississippi. Everyone around me was obsessed with church and football and who was dating who. And the only thing that kept me sane was video games. I'm not exaggerating when I say from like five years old until 15, I really just stayed in my room and hid from everyone and played video games. I find so much power in like characters like Tara and Celeste, like when they're trying to find themselves in Final Fantasy VI, that story matters to me. And I really hear what you're talking about. And that's why I I, I, I hear what you're saying when you say you wanted those institutions to respect you. I, I hope you can see the same humanity in me when I say I wanted to feel like games saw me too, right? So the answer here isn't you're right and I'm wrong or I'm wrong and you're right. It's that, like, this is a big industry. We can make a lot of different games that speak to different people. You know, Deb, you have a really good video on Stellar Blade. I love porny games with a hot female protagonist. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. You know, they can make games like that. If you don't like it, you don't have to play it. What I object to in the marketplace is... I think that we have a problem when so few people that are not, that don't fit a very narrow box, make it into senior leadership or get to decide what kind of games get made. I, I think it has consequences like that just filter through the whole industry and make games bad. And I'm not even talking about diversity. I'm talking about like gameplay choices, right? I think all of us would look at the video game industry right now and say, it's not working. It's putting out garbage product and they are meeting like the the financial fate that they deserve in many cases. So I, I just I hope you can see like I love games exactly as much as you do. Your yep. isn't your position kind of the pro gamer gate side though? It seems like the anti the 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 gamer gate oh. people were saying <laughs> that these video games are problematic because they create negative stereotypes of women. So they're saying, look, these games need to be removed from the marketplace. My focus during Gamergate was on harassment. It was about hiring policy in the industry. That was Anita Sarkeesian's bag. And, you know, I, I, I did not strongly agree with that back then. And I don't strongly agree with it now. Right. But so like, like, cause like what Jay is talking about it is, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people would have had that much of a problem in 2014, and later, if the idea was, hey, let's have more female protagonists yeah, representation, or representation yeah. when it, it was, you're wrong, you're flat out wrong. Well, man. but the, yeah, but the <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. The problem was sure. like because with when the Nita, you know, bring up her videos, you know, before Gamergate and the stuff after Gamergate, it was all um, it wasn't just like we need more women. It was like we need more women 
because men are horrible sexist and white people are racist. Like it was always and these baked games into, need to go. Yeah, like it was always kind of like combined. And I think that was what a lot of people were reacting to. When I remember when Far Cry 2 came out, which was one of my very favorite games. Far Cry 2 is probably the best in the entire series. Better than it's not three? graphically. Oh, oh my three God. is great and Blood Dragon is great, but two was really a breakthrough. And I remember talking on the IGN boards about how frustrated I was that you couldn't be, um, they didn't have a woman protagonist in this game because you mm -hmm. got to choose. And I got BTFO'd on the IGN board for that. That was just a constant for talking about, like, I would like to have this option in this game. Right. So I, I don't agree with you there. Well, I mean, okay. Uh, yeah. If you don't agree with that, but you, I would assume you'd agree that there definitely would have been significant like it would have been smart and probably more moral if the position of people on the left at the time were like hey let's be more inclusive as opposed to hey let's be more inclusive and fuck you whitey right that's i can say the reason i focused on what i did was because of that reason i oh so I, okay but so yeah. do you think so even in even in 2014 you felt like there was too much animosity towards white people and men in those spaces I, I thought that Anita Sarkeesian was ultimately an academic, and I understood the points of view she was making in the video. I thought they were well thought out. Mm -hmm. I privately thought it was not a way that was going to bring about positive change to the industry, because critiquing the output of the industry does not really get to the core of the problem. To me, the problem is uh, the hiring discrimination that hires within the industry. So that's why I focused on that. Yeah, but like with Anita, to me, it's not just like the the output that would that I would imagine to have a difference. It's like she believes in a very radical, critical theory based version of feminism in terms of the ideology that she's pushing, and that ideology kind of informs her whole worldview. And unfortunately, I think that's the ideology that's crept into a lot of these diversity spaces. Yeah. So I, I think that's the problem is that you have to combat this idea, this toxic ideology that's kind of using this idea of, of we need more women and minorities in these spaces as kind of like a mask to sneak in its other horrible shit. Like, yeah. you know, this this woman that wrote this article that we're talking about, the Kotaku article for Sweet Baby, Allison uh, Mercant. Mercante, um, Freudian slip. She, I mean, the fact that she wrote on Twitter recently that you can't be racist against white people to, and still has Ooh. a job at Kotaku to me is insane. Like yeah, that's, that's, dying that's anyway. one of the most, that. that's the most was true. <laughs> but to me, that's like when people say you can't be racist against white people, that's really only used to justify racism against white people. And it's just an insane thing that, that, I can't imagine the right wing equivalent, kind of going back to what you were saying, Adam. I can't imagine the right wing equivalent of that flying, you know, and not that person not getting canceled. Of course. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. To be fair, That's she is receiving yeah. more blowback for this sort of nonsense than the crazier people 10 years ago did. So things oh, yeah. are shifting. Yeah. Uh, you'll th yeah, I agree. And I've said this multiple times on the show. You know, the winds are shifting. I think wokeness is definitely going on the decline instead of the, up, you know, on the upward swing. I think a lot of this is because of Israel and people are like, holy shit, these people are crazy. And also people are just kind of like sick of it because it's yeah. very draining. <laughs> it's been like okay, 10 gu years. Guys, yeah, well, guys, well, guys, so, guys, guys, what's, okay, uh, where are we at? What's the red pill meter on Verona Wu now? Are we at like 65%, <laughs> 75%? What do you, Sitch, what's your take? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to give a give 50%. Okay. 50, 50, 50. Oh, wow. 50, yeah. I mean, that's a coin toss. It's not even yeah. yes. than yes. A full centrist. Yeah. People, anyway, okay, I, I'm going to look, I'm going to give her 65%. I think, look, this whole oh, October 7th thing has kind of woken her up a bit. I, I awoke, oh, ironically, woken her up. There you go. When we so get to the you want to part weigh of the in election depth? where we're criticizing Trump nonstop, I think you'll find that number go down. A bit. When you're <laughs> when you're criticizing Trump, uh, well, look, I that that's look criticizing Trump is fine. I don't it, that doesn't really weigh in on the 
on the red pill slash woke meter. Well, I guess me. what do you mean by yeah. red pill, Adam? Because everyone's going to yeah. interpret that a little differently. But well, she she's waking up to the fact that there's this double standard, this cultural imbalance. Like a lot of people on the left won't even come close to admitting that the left has cultural power. They want to act like, oh, look, we're so subjugated by everyone. The right controls everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it's just it's it's an it's a fictitious read of reality. Like they think the the media is all right wing. They believe in the the duopoly. The, the you know you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah, anyway, of course. Uh, Dev, it's 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 all capitalist. That's why. Dev, yeah. where are you at? What's well? Give a give Brianna a rating. A rating on how a red pill rating. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus! I like twenty five percent. Yeah, There's a long way to go. God. Thank you. There's a long way Thank to go. You. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So he's saying you're pretty much completely uh, in the dark, which huh? I don't, that's not a compliment. I don't know why you're thanking him, but. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Listen, if you're hundred percent red pilled, you're also pretty retarded. So don't worry. Well, that's what I'm saying. I <laughs> think, I think you're, you, I think everyone in this conversation is using a completely different definition of red <laughs> a pill. Different so definition of red pill. Right. Look, is I'm it? not, <laughs> I'm not talking about the, you know, you go out and get your, 15 different thoughts. You're not, not talking about the Andrew about, Tate red pill. Yeah, the, get I'm not talking about the Andrew Tate version of red pill. And you take their money. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. I was <laughs> talking more of like the Jonathan Haidt type of red pill, like understanding that there are these, these two, that there are two movies that people see and kind of being able to see both movies accurately, which I, you know, when you first started coming on Brianna, I'd say you really didn't have any understanding of the conservative perspective at all. But I feel like you, you know, have kind of opened up to that. Conservatives are not just evil people. I've never thought conservatives are just evil people. Right. Well, I, I conceptual look, I conceptualize progressives and conservatives as both necessary parts of a system. Like the progressives are basically the, the offense of society, they're out there looking for opportunities that might be missed. And conservatives are worried about the gains in society that we've already achieved. They don't want to lose those gains. So I do think like any sports team, you need a, an effective offense and defense. A lot of people, they don't see it that way. They have this Manichaean view of the world where conservatives and progressives are at war and one will annihilate the other. And I just, I don't think that's a healthy way to look at it. So when I yeah. think of somebody that's red pilled, I think of somebody kind of in the Jonathan Haidt sense, they understand that both of these factions serve a valuable purpose in society and they're really not trying to annihilate the other side. So they're trying, sense to they're, trying yeah. they're trying to yeah. use the other side effectively. So since you only Go have ahead, 45 Dev. minutes left, if there's anything else to talk about this, we can talk about it, but I do know that you have super chats for us. Yeah, let's I, know go. Someone, I know someone in the chat wants me to talk about the blood money. I, I mean, that's just a theory. Money? Well, no, I guess yeah. look the Aiden Paladin thing. Like that Aiden Paladin thing, is like yeah. no, Aiden no, Paladin is coming out as strong. Different. Aiden Paladin is coming out as strong. She thinks like we're on the Brianna Wu. Like you're writing us monthly checks or something to come out and show for the oh, Democratic yeah. Party. Oh yeah, she so. knows. How does she know? <laughs> look, you're she could have throw us under the bus. Look, Brianna is is. She's lying right now. That's not true. <laughs> no, <laughs> listen. We, the, we, the real reason we brought Brianna, Brianna on and Dev on at the same time is because we want to renegotiate the amount that she pays us. Because I don't think oh, it's enough for the service. Everybody, that we're <laughs> look. Everybody's going to think Aiden does not is not going to know that you're being sarcastic right now. So it's, this is going to get us in bigger trouble. Sitch, I tell you what. You come over to the Casa de Wu. You can look at one of my Porsches. Oh, look at this! Keys, I get okay? a car. Whichever okay, one you I'm on board. Want. <laughs> I'm on board. Maybe not my Cayman because that's a that's my track toy. That's my really okay. expensive. So one. how look? How far up Biden's ass does does Sitch have to get to actually get the Porsche? That's what I want to know. Yes, that's true. <laughs> like what? It, well, look. <laughs> You're shilling for the Democratic Party, right? You want you want to get Biden. How do you th do you care if Biden gets substituted out for somebody else? Like, what is your take I on make that? Make my job a lot easier, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a, I'm ultimately a hired gun. You know, I I do what uh, I'm uh, asked to do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, Biden's our nominee. I'll go with that. Uh, I'm not going to lie and tell you his age is not a problem because it is. Uh, and it's, uh, really disturbing to see people try to pretend it's not. <laughs> yeah. I mm -hmm. think he's going to get sub subbed out, but I, I think it's unlikely, but 
<laughs> so, okay, we'll see. I mean, when Trump is polling double digits ahead of him and like he knows dies after the first debate, well, <laughs> well, I don't, it depends when the first, it could be too late depending on the timeline. Yeah. If but, the first debate goes off, it's definitely too late, but we'll right. see what happens after the convention. So yeah. people in the chat, yeah, go ahead. John. Yeah. People in the chat are asking what, what the story is. So I, I think the TLDR is that the organization you were working with Brianna was paying some streamers, but it was all above board. People thought it Ooh. wasn't basically. Yep. And like, I know, and I know that Wick got some flack for it, but Wick said, no, no, I, I've told everyone this is public that I'm getting paid for this. Yeah. And for some reason, Aiden spun that into Adam and Sitcher getting paid. So wait, wait, wait. Okay. Cause and I'll be honest. I'm getting I don't even paid know, sometimes. I don't <laughs> even know the whole paint. So who was getting paid and what were people getting paid for? What is even, what is this even about? Uh, it's about a group called Progressive Victory. Um, mm -hmm. They're basically, um, you know, uh, the, when I was working with Progressive Victory, uh, there was basically, uh, there's a problem on the left that everyone spends so much time chasing their tails uh, that uh, there's a real need for leadership and for people to come together and to kind of decide uh, what stories are important and to kind of like uh, bring everyone together to chase like one car down the street rather than you know 500 different cars so basically people uh were paid um a, a fee uh to basically sit on a leadership committee and uh talk about the major stories for the week and uh we would sit there and figure out what was important uh what the good strong messaging would be and uh we would like look at clips that people had put out that we thought resonated with the core values of the uh the organization and we would help promote them so mm -hmm. you know 100 above board um very normal uh i hate to break it to y'all this is happening on twitch uh i'm sorry TikTok, a trillion times worse uh and uh yeah this is this so is politics <laughs> there were twitch politics streamers doing this with you basically yeah okay and like everyone knew it was like a big secret thing it was all it was always public uh i didn't tell anyone if they needed to say if they were doing it or not um it's their choice to make how they run their own careers and what right. they want to say um but, but I, know the that, accusation. I, I, I know that well hold on I, because i know that wick made it public yeah. wick made it public i don't know anybody else who was involved with it though so i i don't know yeah look the, look, the accusation yeah this real quick the accusation with us that aiden was making was that we our content is too pro biden and therefore she suspects that we're you know, we're getting paid by you. Would you say that our content, would you pay us for our content, Brianna? <laughs> would you say? <laughs> I think at the end of the day, you guys do a good show and you're interested in democracy. So I, I never reached out to you because I, 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 I don't know if there's enough political alignment there, but I would, I would <laughs> oh, consider. Oh, yes, this is great. Keep talking. No, no, no. I, I, just for, for what Progressive Victory was doing. But, yeah, as my career goes on and I'm doing other things, um, I, I, I don't think it's impossible we would work together at some point. But, uh, like, my instinct is probably you guys would say no. So. Mm -hmm. Well, look, you obviously don't know Sitch very well because sure. Sitch would definitely say yes. Listen, I'll listen. I'll anyone can pay me to say anything. Okay. As obviously. long as do you as really long, feel that way? No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Well, look, Sitch, as long as Sitch, as long as it was Sitch disclosed, you're not but, the Jew allegations. It's true. No, Adam is just saying that because I said I if someone to pay me a hundred grand to wear a dress on stream, I'd do it, and Adam sure. refused. But so, but here's the thing: I feel really strongly about this. I would never, ever, ever ask someone to say something publicly that they don't believe in. What I try to do is bring people together that share common beliefs. And I would hope everyone on the stream today believes in democracy, believes in the rule of law, and wants like the United States to continue like no matter who wins, right? Well, except like, for Dev, because he's Canadian, so he doesn't count. Yeah, but Dev, is, Dev, great, is, yeah. Dev is a liberal <laughs> in the traditional sense, right? Sure. Like, yes. I try to bring people together on values and to accomplish big goals together. And I think one of the things I'm good at is working with people when we don't agree on everything. Something I would note I was not good at 10 years ago. So, you know, like, I'm always looking to like move in a direction that gets things done with people, especially on public policy. Right. No, and I, I agree that that's the way it, it normally works. Like you don't approach somebody and tell them to change their entire belief no. system. You approach somebody who has the 
belief system that you already want and you say, look, let me just make it easier for you to get that belief system out there. Look, yeah, and, uh, 100%. Uh, yeah. But as soon as money is involved, everybody's always, they're going to say like, you're a shill. You don't really believe that you're well, just doing it to get paid. I mean, that's standard pushback to that system anyway. So, so. the, the accusation of, of you paying us, it, it was like this, it, it was from Aiden and Spoon watching our conversation with Carl about liberalism, our third conversation. I think we've had about him with him about liberalism because we're both still in favor of liberalism, I guess. And the, and Aiden and Spoon are not. They're kind of on the Mencius Mulbug. My understanding, I don't want to mischaracterize their positions. My understanding they're is they're kind of on yeah, they're the yeah the Mencius Mulbug monarchist train. And I don't know where Aiden is, but Spoon is kind of in this like mirror position of the communist, where basically anyone who's not a monarchist is like a far left winger, which is stupid and insane. <laughs> And I actually on well, Twitter we had an interaction where I challenged him. I said, "Can you name one position? You're, you know, he, you're accusing me of getting a payoff here because you're saying that since I started doing YouTube, I've like moved so much further to the left. Can you ex like give me one example of one position that I've moved further to the left on since starting YouTube?" And he failed to do anything, on, you know, regarding any of that. So the, I mean, the whole thing is just obviously goofy nonsense. <laughs> it's just like a funny meme, <laughs> but well, Dude, the, the thing is, have... oh, go ahead, Devon. I apologize. But oh, just real quick, the, the whole thing with with those two is that they they are a blend of libertarianism and monarchism, which sounds retarded to Americans, but <laughs> but there is something to it. We're we're basically like, if 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 the government is private property, then being a monarchy is like being a property owner. Like being a monarchist is like being a pro like being a monarch. Sorry, is like being a property owner. So the, they they kind of blend in. They kind of blend through capitalism. It's Final Fantasy VII. We were just talking about it. Shinra yeah, is literally yeah. is literally the system that they're talking about. So, yeah. Yes. So, but but basically, um, basically, all libertarians, whether they're left libertarians or right libertarians, they kind of have the same problem where where they believe that any um any facts that come from let's say a normal source or they come from this system, they are the product of power, not the product of truth. Right. So like, why should I believe the government on anything? Because the government has its own agenda. It's, it's not, you know, it, it, it is, it is, um, it does have a moral direction, right? It wants certain things. And so any, anything that comes from the government, we should not believe. That's what all stripes of libertarians tend to say about this sort of thing. Mm. So when they look at, so, so I, I watched that, that the, a larger part of that stream and they also accused me of it, but like it was only spoon and it was like 10% of the accusation was dev 90% of it was you two of taking the Brianna Wu bucks. And, and, yeah. but basically the, the, the idea was because Brianna Wu works for the democratic party, then like anyone who's promoting her and, and also because we know th that some money has changed hands, Anyone who's promoting her must also be getting paid. And if they say no, well, of course they would lie about it because they are mm. the products of power, right? Right. It, it, it is the power before truth calculation that all libertarians fall to, whether they're left. Yeah, but or I said left. that she was paying us repeatedly. <laughs> well, I beat go, the I system. You beat the system by just admitting it when it wasn't yes. happening. <laughs> Speaking of Mr. Ubercross, our, our lawyer for $20, he said, I have your last monthly check held in escrow. But Brianna won't <laughs> let me release it due to your lack of advocating for communism. I've tried negotiating, but her team won't budge. Wow. Go. I do love communism. I, 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 Clip if, it. I just, if I could Clip say it. something for just yes, a, a quick sure. uh, second. Yeah, I, I'm looking at chat coming by and I want to hit something really head on. And I want to tell you why I feel this way. It is. There's not a lot that makes me mad, but it it does make me angry when people question my integrity and, you know, say things like, you know, oh, you're only saying that because you're trying to win the audience over or you don't really believe that or, you know, progressives are losing power. Yeah, I really take a lot of pride in trying to express how I feel like thoughtfully and with it with honesty. And, you know, from my point of view, I need you to understand, like, I grew up queer in Mississippi, where just being myself was really, really hard. My family disowned me when I came out. So being myself and expressing myself authentically is something that's really fucking important to me. And mm -hmm. there's nobody that tells me what to say. I don't pretend to have opinions that I don't have. What I do try to be is 
thoughtful. And as I have grown as a person and have kind of dealt emotionally with some of the things that have happened to me, I can kind of look at things with more distance and with a little bit more sophistication. So like if my views are changing and evolving as time marches on, I think this is a good quality. And I think the fact that I'm at DEF CON 5 every fucking day on my Twitter with these communist nut jobs that are pro-terrorist, I really hope that's strong evidence for my integrity. Now, some of you want to see me in the absolute worst light possible, and I can't do anything about that. But I can say you're fucking wrong about me. Mm -hmm. I think regarding the, especially regarding the Israel stuff, like, I... You know, people are saying this with like Hunter Avalon too, when he kind of like switched teams. And obviously, you you haven't done that to that extent. But people were like accusing him of being a grifter. Mm -hmm. It just, I I don't. It seems like almost everyone loses money and audience when they start attacking their own side or switching switching teams. Almost always recently. So I I don't really understand the accusation from that perspective. Yeah, that someone is like you know, oh well, something's becoming like I guess. I guess actually, no. There, there's someone who is gained a lot from that. Is um, what's the guy's name? That was that guy uh, Hankel, who was like very right wing, and now he's a communist. Yep. So I guess actually that did work out for Hankel. Yeah. yeah. So never mind. I take it back. I guess Jackson just succeeded there. But I think you have to go from one extreme to the other. I think the problem is when people go from like a more extreme to a more centrist position that they just kind of piss off everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what's it's, happening. Uh, that seems to not be like the winning financial strategy. But. Um. So with 30 minutes, I know that there's some decent questions in the super chats. Should we do them? Yeah, sure. let's do them. Do you have look those decent these, questions? Look at you. Dev? Are you waiting? Dev actually ask? being mindful of time yeah. in super chats. Yeah. It's impressive. I, 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 know, I know what's going on. So. My did you, parents did, you did not give me money to found my game studio. That is not true. That is That's not Artemis true. Foul. <laughs> That's Artemis Foul. He, he, might, he, might, he might be mixing up old lore because yes, I is. know that, that we had dug up at one point during Gamergate that Zoe Quinn actually came from some money. Maybe he's mixing up old lore. Okay. Artemis Foul was asking if, if your parents gave you money to start your game development company. You're saying no. That didn't no. happen. Okay. How do you have so many Porsches? Is that like dnc money <laughs> no the, the reality of how i got my porsches is i grew up in mississippi and i know a lot about repairing trashed cars and i buy trashed porsches and my way of spending a weekend because so much of my job is talking is shutting the fuck up and going down to my garage and repairing them and i've turned like extremely trashed porsches into extremely valuable porsches by spending all day sandblasting the wheels and getting them powder coated or redoing the electrical system or redoing the suspension that's my hobby and, wow you know, you know electrical cool i'm impressed hobby. I mean, yeah, I, I've heard of a guy who like who worked at a um, worked at a, at, at a, I don't know if it was Porsche, but it was some sort of supercar. He, he, he some sort of some, some sort of company making supercars. He worked in a factory, and basically over the course of ten years, he would just bring home one part, and then eventually build a whole car. <laughs> nice. Well, there you go. That is that, awesome. Yeah. And actually, real quick, shoe on head in the chat says an easy way to spot an actual grifter is if they literally never piss off their own audience. That is one hundred. Oh thousand yeah, percent true very okay, so true th this time last year i lost like five thousand subs for a take that a lot of people didn't like and it, it temporarily was like it was trending on twitter for a weekend and it's like mm -hmm. you know what yes you, so like I, I don't understand what was the take let's see if we can get another five thousand no <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me privately sure uh sure. j mac our, our circuit yeah. father from their 60 dollars. thank you so much uh jay says kind of regarding the, the previous thing but the issue where these people were saying that games needed to change and that the old games, the ones we loved, were flawed on a moral level and we were flawed for liking them, plus tons of respect to you, Wu, for having these discussions. I'm fine with Wu not being red-pilled, but at least engaging with these ideas. We don't all have to agree on everything, just agree on our love for games. Yeah, I agree. Look at that. Wonderful. Yeah. And also, J. Mac from $10 says, Wu is a lover of cars. I want to show you pictures of my g pass garage so bad i feel like you would really appreciate them send it to me on twitter we will totally geek out on cars i 100 percent promise i don't you. even know what a g pass garage even is i'm thinking about putting a, a pcc m plus in my uh 96 boxster which is uh it'll be a fun project right 
I know y'all don't know what that is, but it's cool. No, nope. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andrew Clark for two hours says, so glad the sponsor could join today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is in relation to. Val Van Gogh gave us $20. He says, does Brianna Wu believe that out of control public violence and cannibalism in Haiti can be fixed by raising the minimum wage? No. Okay. I don't even know. <laughs> okay. There I, you I, know, I know Haiti's kind of a shit show right now. I mean, I know what's going on in Haiti. I don't know what to do with you, but. Uh, so I, for, I support yeah. I, I support like the intervention with the Houthis. I think Obama was very good with Operation Infinite Resolve. I think we were good at dealing with the Somali pirates. Like mm-hmm. I want to see the United States take a more interventionist uh, role in addressing issues like that. So I don't think the minimum wage would solve that. They said Haiti, not yeah. Oh, but fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I agree. I don't. I don't know what. Like it's to me, it's kind of baffling that Biden has been seemingly so weak with the Houthis. So. I think they he's bombing the hell out of them now. Okay, so, good. I That's love good. it. Yep. Uh, Sella for fifty dollars. Thank you, Sella. Says I remember during the ME three controversy, the usual suspects like Movie Blob said fans should shut up because calling for changing the ending was quote interfering in the creative process. Now we have Sweet Baby Ink doing just that through extortion, no less. Wow. There you go. There you go. Uh, that- hitting. That cringe and uh, Ronaldo Ramirez said that in relation to Alan Wake, they said they race swapped the woman that you were talking about, that she was white in the first game. They made her black in the second game. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know that either. What's the name of the character? I guess I'll look it up. I never played any of the Alan Wake games. So, uh, Mithram 6 for 500 Kazarks. Thank you. It says bringing wow. people in to give you opinion on how a product is perceived has been done for decades using focus groups and test audiences. That's completely different from bringing in ideologues to critique your product from a very specific ideological angle. I think that's a good point. I think that's fair. And that's a way it's different than like bringing in military experts to uh, evaluate authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Evil Bookman for three months says, never forget Alec Holwick. How do you say that guy's name? Oh, Alec? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is your your bag if you want to talk about it. Yeah, because you probably saw me talk about the I conspiracy did. on Side yeah. Scholars. Yeah. I mean, there's probably something to it, but I don't know. I haven't done the full research. So here, here TLDR, um, here's what we absolutely know for a fact. All right. Zoe Quinn accused Alec Holowaka of raping her back in 2012. And she puts this accusation out in 2018 or 2019. Uh, three days later, the guy kills himself. Um, he got fired first, didn't he, from his job? Yes. Well, he also he owned the company, but nonetheless, the company still cut ties with him, even though he was the owner. They're like, "Listen, get the fuck out. We're not working with you." It, it, like he 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 retained ownership, but no one would work with him, and mm-hmm. and the board basically fired him, and he decided to just acquiesce and leave. Um, and then yeah, he he killed himself after three days. Mm. Um, the the current conspiracy that i think might have some legs we just don't know uh we just don't know enough yet is that uh, ba- basically the company that provided the funding for sweet baby inc to exist is a company in, also in canada called weird ghosts weird ghosts is run by alec Holowaka's sister and she is handing out a ton of money to a whole bunch of these these uh these narrative companies in canada like sweet baby inc and she seems to be getting this money out of nowhere because th- because I, I dug up some stuff and they don't seem to be like a really rich family or anything. So it's like, where's the money coming from? And the the only conclusion is that she in, she actually mentions in a, in a PDF back in 2021 where she's talking about like her, her like the, the, the design for her business that she inherited Alec Holowaka's IPs and, and his company. And the the one big hit that they had was the indie game night in the woods which has like millions of sales under its belt so people are thinking that so you know zoe quinn bullies this guy to suicide his sister inherits her the his company and then starts using the money for zoe quinn's friends in the industry which is just like holy shit like that's that sounds like a, a dramatic tale right there but it it the the narrative isn't is there's still a few holes in that theory that has to be filled in well, I think it's probably impossible for it to be like intentionally played out in some way. Like, like, yeah. oh, I knew that if I 
you know, made an accusation this person would commit suicide and then their sister would get all their money. Like, that's just, that's too many, you know, yeah. ifs, right? Yeah. I don't think there's a conspiracy here. They're like, you know, they planned this out. Like, how do we get this guy's right. money? Well, I'll, I'll accuse him. I'll accuse him of rape and then he'll kill himself. And then you inherit the money. Then you give it to me. Like, and, No, I don't think that's what happened. But it's the fact that it's all kind of the same group and they all kind of have the same political ideology. Sure. And this guy just basically got run over by it. That now, it does it does leave a bad taste in your mouth. Right, right. So, so I don't think it's a conspiracy. I, well, a let me factual, just finish though. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't think it's a conspiracy, but what I do think is pretty insipid is that I can't like to me it's totally disgusting that if someone's you know commits suicide and their sister takes you know a bunch of money they inherit from them and they basically start giving it to like the cause that kind of got them to commit suicide. That seems kind of fucked up. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Right? It's, it's, yeah. Bad taste in her mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So Dev, I wanted to ask, um, so with the, with the, with the suicide situation, it, and uh, I, I genuinely cannot remember this. Wasn't there some complicated, weren't there some complications there? Like he was already suffering from extreme depression and suicidal ideation and stuff like that. Or am I just misremembering that because it was a decade? No, ago. that's true. Yeah, yeah. He had a lot of other problems as well, but he, he, he was kind of managing them, but yeah. it seems like the the, the the false accusation pushed him over the edge. And by the way, we we know now that it was false because um, DMs leaked later that showed that it was false. So Zoe Quinn just made this shit up to be was relevant it, again. So wait, I because I, I didn't know about that. We like the DMs that leaked were that showing that was intentionally false from her. Like what was what did they say? Do you remember? It, I don't think I don't think the I don't think the DM said like hey. I'm going to accuse this guy to bump my career up. It was more of like one of those things where a person cries rape and then you see the conversations and like they, they consented in the conversation. You know what I mean? It's that. Sort okay. Of thing. So, well, okay. I, I mean, it's hard to tell with Zoe. Cause I, she seems, I don't know. She seems like a very dishonest person. <laughs> so, she does. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's very, you know, all over the place, but, uh, Mark Twain's revenge. Thank you for the 50 gifted memberships. Thank you so Woo! much. Look at that. Very generous. RBGH fan for twenty dollars. Thank you. Says Brianna, uh, is it okay if a progressive is debanked for using a phrase like "from the river to the sea" um, if the bank deems it is anti-Semitic? I mean, I think they can set their own policies. That seems kind of anti-free speech. So you know, that would be my objection to it. Like, uh, what's the right-wing equivalent? Like saying. The South will rise again, I suppose. Uh, I think that would be an overreach. I think if you're out there like um, strongly supporting terrorism like Hezbollah, uh, I think that's kind of a materially different situation. But I, I wouldn't support it in that case. Um, no Nokra, one, two, three, for 50 pounds. Thank you. Says, I haven't given you guys money for in a while. Over 200 words. Okay, I can't figure out anything clever to ask. Well, thank you for the 50 pounds. <laughs> or fifth, sorry, 50 euros. I don't mean to insult you by calling you a Yeah, thanks. American. That's very generous. Uh, Joe the Make for five dollars says, quote, gamers are dead. Gamers don't have to be your audience. End quote. Nope, no disrespect whatsoever. Um, the F on. Yeah, I mean, well, would you agree? Because that whole framing of it, like, gamers are dead. Like, isn't that, like, what got every, you know, gamer upset? Is this, like, attack on yes. gamers? Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. It, yeah, for, for, from my point of view, that is when Gamergate turned from let's dig up these people's professional connections to try to find more corruption. That's when it turned into a we fucking hate these people because now they're actually attacking us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Brianna Wu's accountant for twenty dollars <laughs> says, "Hey, Bri, I lost your number, so I'm getting a hold of you here. When I'm writing the check to Sitch and Adam, do I address it to both of them, or are they on separate checks?" <laughs> Well, I think uh, Adam takes all the money and embezzles yeah, that's it right. uh, through his car wow. wash. Uh, that's right. So it's been that, a secret. Brown has been paying us oh for 10 God. years. Yes. I've got to answer this because it's in the chat 9 million times. Will Brianna play Stellar Blade? Hell yes. I cannot wait for this game to come out. I will play the hell out of it. Of course. There you go. Stellar Blade's the one with the hot chick people were mad about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it looks great too. It looks awesome. From my point of view, it's like Metal Gear Revengeance with like a cool woman protagonist. Like, sign me up. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, it's it's funny because like, I feel like most women 
like to see hot women be <laughs> like do things in movies and video games. Like I don't this whole weird contingency from like someone like the very far left that like we need to make all the women unattractive in the games. Just I, I, that's just so detached from what like the average audience member, including women, want. The first thing I do, and I don't think I'm alone when I make a character and a character creator, is I try to make the most beautiful thing I can, right? I, I, it's, you know, there you go. Uh, I, I have no issue with it. I mean, I do, I, I and Dev, you're probably going to disagree with me here, but when it's so over sexualized that I can't emotionally connect with it um, or it feels really pandering, that's when I kind of just roll my eyes and I'm like, whatever, dude. But, you know, I like a little sex appeal in my games. I enjoy that, especially if it's well done. Um, well, thanks so much. Uh, Dwight Baldwin for 20 hours says, does Wu still support boycotting Hogwarts legacy? If so, why? No, I said on uh, record that, um, you know, I I supported this in the beginning because I obviously don't like J.K. Rowling. Um, but mm -hmm. the boycott failed. And if you're serious about political change, uh, you owe yourself the intellectual honesty to ask if what you are doing is working. And it's very clear that going after J.K. Rowling, someone I vehemently disagree with, is not making things better for trans people. So the way I feel right now is you know, she can have her say on Twitter. I don't agree with it. And I'm going to focus my efforts on public policy. Uh, Adam unfriended for one hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Says the sweet baby ink saga isn't the beginning of Gamergate two point but rather a start of healing and the rise of Renaissance for gaming could be a slow or fast process depending on a few factors. Um, Oku's co consultation for race, sex, sexuality is basically illegal and is illegal based on the Civil Rights Act. I don't know if it's. I'd have to see this. What are the specific consultations that they were doing? That were that you think were illegal, but maybe. So someone sent me uh, a picture of some old tweets you had, Bree, that were like about your parents giving you money to start an animation business. Is that what the person you think was referring to? That's probably what they were conflating with. But that mm -hmm. was when I was what eighteen. So that was a long. It says time when ago. you were twenty in the tweet. Oh. Well. Was it a lot of money? How much money did they give you? Like 50 bucks? Because my parents no, would do was, stuff like that. They'd be small like, here's 50, a million dollars. Here's 50 was, bucks to start your animation studio. It, it was a few I'd be like, mom, dollars. I think. Yeah. A mm. few thousand dollars? Is that what you said? A few hundred thousand dollars. Okay. $200,000? Wow. Okay. Nice. It was a good experience. I and learned a this lot was before. Is this before you came mm. out as trans? It was a really long time ago. Okay. Uh, let's see. JMac for ten dollars says Wu plays Torin confirms. No, so JMac likes <laughs> Torin. JMac is like a big Torin simp. So really, I don't know this game from from Tor World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, the the, the, the bull people in World of Warcraft. The cow people, oh. yeah. But there you go. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions here to read. A lot of statements. Thank you for all the statements. Um, so I know Artemis Fowl sent one, but I think he's being spicy with it. Uh, since he's a friend of mine, Artemis Fowl. Oh, really? You know him? Yes. For ten dollars, says Dev Wu Adam and Sitch. I'm thinking of creating a religion that tells banks that it is against the religion to be charged interest on loans I take out, so we don't have to pay interest. Thoughts? Well, I mean, I don't. I think if you start that religion, the banks would not give you any money right is, is it what is that how is that spicy yeah what were you thinking of dev that makes that spicy no it was a different super chat yeah oh, Ar okay. Ar artemis is like make sure this gets this 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 make sure brianna sees this and i'm like okay sure so for five this is for five dollars like an hour ago yeah. and he asked uh are there any conspiracy theories or stories that involve brianna Wu that she found surprising or wrong oh my god yeah i mean uh <laughs> Yeah, many. Uh, I think the biggest one, Dev, and I've really appreciated you pointing this out, is that I sent myself harassment. I logged into a different account on Steam, uh, you know, with the is GSX founder Brianna Wu a terrible person when I was in fact trying to 
like limit all the personal attacks and doxing and mean comments to one thread. So I could have some part of our stream page that was talking about the new levels and the new combat engine, the new lighting and the new character models and all the stuff that my team had worked on for a year and a half. Uh, yeah, uh, that is a conspiracy theory about me that I wish would die. Hmm. I do are remember you, a lot of them back in the day. Yeah. I remember like I, I remember like people saying that you harassed yourself. I remember people saying that like you had sock puppet accounts that you were using to harass yourself. I I, I think the reason why is because somebody else actually got caught doing that and they just mm -hmm. painted like all anti gamergate with that brush, you know? Yeah. Which is which is what happens because I mean all all of pro gamergate got painted with a harassment brush too. So th this happened. This is how yeah. it was. Um, I don't I don't I hate to go back to the money thing, but look, you got. Three hundred thousand dollars from your folks to start an animation studio, and you seem like that's a that's a bad thing that your people are giving you a hard time for. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, well, you you kind of played it down it like was it wasn't a big thousand. deal. She said a few hundred thousand, which well, I, I would tweet. think it is says two hundred thousand on the tweet. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just as a twenty year old, like I, my parents didn't give me two hundred thousand dollars when I turned twenty years old. That's a, that is like a lot of money. It was a really big gift. Yeah, yeah, especially if it was a long time ago when two hundred thousand dollars was was more money. So yeah, I just it seemed like you uh, you kind of denied it at first that you got money, and then I think it's really insulting that they helped me with my game studio when that's just not true. Uh, that was my husband and I. Um, one of the ways we funded our game studio is, uh, you know, Frank had a, uh, his grandmother died. And the the deal that we came to is if we uh, uh, basically took apart her house and refurbished it, we could live there for a few years rent free uh, and save that money and spend it towards the staff, um, which was a hell of a lot of work. Uh, you know, there were so many months I sat there and, uh, you know, ate red beans and rice, uh, just three meals a day for months on end to pay my team. So, you know, my family, so, who was I remember that actually cruel to me, uh, you know, giving them credit for anything that's happened, you know, my professional life in the last 10 years, it just, it pisses me off. It's hitting on some trauma. I think y'all probably. Okay. Look, I, I get it. Look, too. I just, yeah. I want to, I want to make it clear. So obviously you're. The, the dig that people are making is they want to make it sound like, oh, it was just handed to you. You didn't do anything on your yeah. own. And, and you're, the conflict over it is you worked very hard, very diligently, and the money yeah. was just not really that. I mean, it was. It was an part earlier of part of my life. I mean, my parents right. were basically trying to bribe me to be a thing they could control, which is, you know, it's a right. whole, I don't even want to get into it on this. Sure. No, no, no. I just, I want yeah. to make it clear because it just seemed like. Sure. It didn't, I, I sense that there was, you seemed to come clean so easily that it just, it seemed there was a contradiction there, but I think we worked it out. It's kind of a painful thing to talk about. Uh, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do remember the, um, people talking about the, uh, the red beans and rice thing. That was like a tweet that went around. That, that was a meme for a little bit. Um, oh man, what else? Uh, Sotos for twenty dollars says Brianna. Oh, okay. I get why you don't like Toriyama's female characters, but have you ever read Doctor Slump? Ariel or Arele was actually super inspirational to Mario and video games. Also, unfortunate you missed poor Connor's aneurysm last night. <laughs> well, I had a meeting very late. Why are all these super chats for me? Talk to Dev. He's way no more one interested. No, one, no one's yeah. asking Dev any questions. Dev is way more interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Here's one, here's one directed at Dev, though. I kind of already addressed it. Soldoj, again, for $20, says, Dev is horrible at storytelling. No one knew the curator page existed until Sweet Baby Inc. employee tried to get the page taken down and get the guy's entire stream Steam account deleted. That's what started it, Streisand style. There you go. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I know people were talking about it before, but that's where, that, that was the flashpoint. Yeah. Soldoj from another $2 says, Dev is as bad at, as Putin at storytelling. There you go. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It, it, well, he did go full Putin in the beginning there, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> We'd have like 25 minutes if Dev could have just give us a short, the cliff notes, right? Yes. It was fun, though. Sounds too 85 hours says something Dev said about St. Row being made too safe goes into the problems with Spider-Man 2. Miles' dad is a chief, yet NYPD are erased in the sequel. Really? I, I never played it. What, what do they mean? 
they don't have he's not Oh, wait, wasn't it like a made-up police force? Like, he was still a police officer, right? It was just like a made-up police force. That was the NYPD specifically. Or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What you're, I don't know, man. Sorry. Sorry. I never played Spider-Man um, 2. Okay. Artemis is now dredging up the old lore. Oh, is no. That the yeah. Is that the same house that we did a few of her interviews from? That brings up a lot of old memories that are fuzzy. And I, I know what he's getting at. He's being coy. <laughs> So there, there, there was a conspiracy theory about you back during Gamergate, Brianna Wu, that you didn't actually leave your house when you said you did. And people, people were pulling out infographics of you doing various interviews in the mainstream media, and you were like in the same room. Yeah. And each one. So they're like, this is when she was supposed to have left. How is this? Like, how is this possible? You know what, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, uh, so the truth is Frank and I were nearly broke back in those days. So uh, we did spend uh, the first few nights uh, in a hotel uh, and I showed those receipts, I believe, to Stephen Totillo, who wrote a piece about this for Kotaku, if you're looking for verification. And then uh, we very generously had friends that let us come stay at their um, home. Uh, crash there at night. Um, during the day, um, you know, I felt that was safe. I was probably not going to be murdered at my house during the day. All my dev equipment was there, and I popped over there to do interviews because uh, someone's couch uh, is not really a great place to do that. So that's the truth of what happened. So, so, so basically, like you came home to do the interview, then you went out again. Basically, that's right. you, you wanted you wanted to stay as stay at home as uh, as little, little as, possible. as possible. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I I, I did see you get docs. I I have seen those tweets from back in the day. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I understand. Okay, yeah, because I remember he 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 actually linked me a, an in like, like a one of those like schizo collages where it's like a bunch of pictures and like compare all these and it's like yeah, you on October fourteenth, twenty fourteen. And then you October 27th, 2014, these are both like you in your house, but yeah. you, but you said you were gone during those times, right? But if that's the explanation. People actually use those diagrams in my house to plan mass shootings of me and my family and my dogs and uh, would send that to me with things like, we're going to sneak in through here. Uh, we're going to execute a uh, crash in this room. Uh, and if you're asleep here, we're going to shoot you with this pistol. Like it was, there was some really sick shit that went on back then it it really fucked me up to be honest gross mm. yeah so i don't really have five minutes left but I, I meant to ask this and we never got back to it and someone asked too in the chat one eye crow says can you ask brianna to explain what she means when she says woke because <laughs> i like that, what do that's you that's like a five minute question yeah, yeah i know well, that's yeah. kind of i can like, answer it in 20 seconds i kind of i Go was kind of curious as to well no because i care what Bree says i don't know i don't care what you say that but about yeah, what woke means but like because <laughs> Like, what is, like, woke? What is liberal? What is progressive? What is leftist? Like, what are all these terms? Because they all mean different things to everyone, so. I've talked too much, Dad. You you can get this one. Well, no, but it's asking you. We want to know what you think, though. Yeah. I don't have the same problem. We don't problem. care what Dev thinks. I don't yeah. have the same problem with woke that I think a lot of people do. I have a problem with this stuff being done badly in a way that is pandering, in a way that, uh, if you want to put it in game development terms, it breaks immersion. Uh, the story I told earlier about Boyfriend Dungeon, that is wokeness in a way that really breaks my immersion and takes me out of the game because it feels so insincere. Uh, but, you know, like generally speaking, I do want more black people in games. I want more queer people in games. I want it to just, I, I just want it to be done well, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Is, like his political correctness, would that be like a good analogy for it like when the game has to cater to a certain type of political correctness and yeah, it suffers out of fear. yeah yeah the quality suffers from it yeah yeah what are your motivations do you have a good story do you have a good character or are you doing it to go through a checklist and to make sure an audience isn't going to yell at you those are very right. different outcomes yeah okay cool is uh, so, so we, are we done do you, do you want to know my definition then no, come on, Dev. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh my God, Ar Ar Artemis! Right at the end. To be clear, I don't care about any of Brianna Wu's backstory. I, I have tons of people who want to ask her, but are too scared to ask her directly. I've actually heard that about you. Yeah, I, I've heard from people that are like, you know, I want to know what she thinks about, you know, X, Y, Z. Like, I, I want to know what Brianna Wu thinks about certain stories that don't seem to add up from the pro gamergate side but i'm too scared to ask her 
I've heard that a few times. Fairly friendly person. You can reach out to me or Dev. You can be on stream sometime. We'll just walk through it. Happy to do it. Okay. Yeah. I, I I think I think a lot of the fear comes from maybe just an impression of you from ten years ago. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a okay. long time ago. So okay, let's wrap up. Let's do what's uh what dev? What is your definition of woke? You got ten seconds. Wokeism is the ethics and processes of socialism expanded beyond class struggle to include race struggle, gender struggle, sexual struggle, and any other near infinite number of marginalized groups as defined by intersectionality. That's pretty close to situation. That's a great, yeah, yeah, that's a great definition. Yeah. I love yep. it. I, I gave it last year and it went viral. So I was like, this is pretty good. I think, I think this is it. So I just, I, I just keep it now. There you go. My definition is being awake to systemic injustice. Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's mm. why all right this was a more. great this was a great stream yeah yeah you made y'all a lot of money with these super chats you did <laughs> well you both did i know aiden paladin is probably going to be talking about you from the well, I saw, paladin's going to be talking about it later I, I saw today. Spoon in the, yeah i saw spoon in the chat a bit and he's like you know that people watch you and people are telling me what's going on in here right and i'm like yeah okay dude that i know that was part of what makes it funny yeah I'm aware. <laughs> yes. All right. I want to I, give a shout out to Shu, who I saw was in the uh, chat yeah, today. Go ahead. One of the yeah. one of the really nice things um, that I really appreciate with Shu is, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, is yeah, you know, we reached out to each other in DMs a while back, and I was like, I'm so sorry for the way I treated you during Gamer Game. She's like, <laughs> No, I got this and this wrong, and I'm like, Can we just start over? And she's like, Yes, and that was really meaningful to me. So um, I know that the left has some real problems with her, but I think she's a very kind person. So, nice. we're, so do you want to shout out anything else? Do you have any socials or anything you? I, you can find me around. I want to say I really enjoyed your new video, Dev. Uh, and I hope people oh, thank will you. go out there and, and view that. Do you want to tell people about it super quickly? What, the uh, competency crisis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The TLDR of it basically is that there's been enough diversity hiring happening that complex systems are starting to have some serious problems because there's not enough merit left in the system to do the job it has to do. And I basically go into the the right wing view of why that is the case. The left wing view is pretty simple. It blames um, late stage capitalism. The right wing view is, I think, more developed. So that's what I go into. It's really well thought through. It goes through like the history of communism and the differences in Lenin and Stalin. It's a very typical dev video. So I, I appreciate <laughs> Thank you. it. All right. So we're going to finish up the super chats in the next stream. We were going to talk to What If Alt Hist for a bit. So Sounds good. We're nice. Say goodbye. So Thanks, yeah, let me uh, put the. Uh, I'm gonna put what I it, hope is the link. It's a, the I pinned it. It's oh, okay, I pinned nice. it in the chat. Yeah. Guess what's next? It's at the top. It's pinned. You can click on that link and head on over are, there. But are you gonna raid yourself? Can no. we even do that? I'm sure you <laughs> can. Yeah. I think you Wait, can you can, can't you? Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know how to do that. You well, gotta I'll do it real quick before before he turns it off the stream, though. You gotta do it right right now. We're we'll say we we'll say goodbye to you guys, and I'll send Red here the link because we're already a little late. So oh, okay. sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for having me. On. Take yeah. care, Brianna. Thanks we'll for staying in so long. Yeah. Bye. Later. Bye. -bye. Take care, Dev. See ya. Okay. And, and you guys can hear. Uh, and I'll send Red here the link while you try to. I don't know even how to do ourselves. that thing. I always forget how to do that thing. How to do what thing? The the, thing? the, the raid thing. The, it's in some like weird setting, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. We're not gonna do it. Just click yeah. the link in Who the cares? pinned comment. If you don't want to come, if you yeah. don't want to come for the most exciting show on the internet ever created, ever conceived of. Yeah, listen, we're gonna be look. talking about all sorts of crazy things. What if all his just dropped the video a few days yeah. ago? Very interesting to me. That's all yes. about how the CIA knows about psychics and is keeping and is, you know, fucking with us, right? Yes. I want to get the bond with that. Sitchu so. doesn't believe in any conspiracy theory ever. <laughs> believes in psychics. <laughs> believes specifically that the CIA is keeping all the psychic knowledge to themselves, those bastards. Okay. So there you all go. Right. That's true. 
All right. Bye-bye.